met a gypsy. All right, Max Wales joining uh, the Gypsy Tales podcast, mate. Glad we've got you now that you're a big time flat tracker in the US of A. But um, home, mate. So good to get you on. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's been uh, it's, it's uh, a pleasure to be on, and yeah, it's sweet. No, nah, no, nah, keen as dude. So you, you've been killing it. So I need to learn a little bit about <coughs> flat track. Um, so do you want to just like maybe we'll start by breaking down the series that you're in, the bikes that you ride, and maybe we'll pull up some clips, watch some, if there's any good, like, YouTube shit. Like, let's just lay the foundation yep. of flat tracking because I'm a fan, but I'm a fan of, like, going to North Brizzy Cup and, like, <laughs> yeah. and watching it, but I don't know that much about it, so. Yeah, so America Flat Track is uh, an 18-round series. We have uh, four, like, styles of tracks. We have short tracks, half miles, miles, and TTs. Um, what's the difference between those ones so like the short tracks can be like any like they can be as small as 200 meters tiny really but then they can be like 400 meters so like they vary in size and then like the half mile is like a traditional like sprint car track like we have in Oz you know like Mother Mountain whatever Um, and then the miles are you know 1.6k long uh, massive circle and then uh, then we have the TT's so uh, the TT is the only uh, like circuit we can run front brake on yep and there'll be like four of them a year and then the rest of them um no front brake just rear brake and uh and yeah it's it's a lot different to australian flat track uh aussie flat track we run you know front brakes everywhere knobby front tire charles tire rear where over there we have a um we have, yeah said no front brakes and we have a controlled tire um which is 19 inch front and rear we have lowered suspension and uh and yeah a little bit different but once you get the hang of it it's, it's uh it's pretty nice how different is it to ride oh way different really yeah so like when i come back to brizzy cup it's just like four lap races just like all in for it you know um like the first race at brizzy cup this year i'd finished the race i didn't even breathe i was just like <laughs> it's so intense you know miller's bouncing through walls and <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's gone everywhere but um no awesome to be home and racing with all my mates and stuff it's been it's been good being back home for sure oh definitely and and you uh, i know you got like stuck there a little bit and i'm like it's i know what it's like to be over there and want to yeah. you know sort of be at home too but yeah. um so you did you got the that's like the kind of style that's the foundation of, yeah, yeah of yeah. racing um and then so like you ride for red bull factory ktm mm-hmm. what's like the teams how many riders are there is there like are you just getting good prize money out of it like what's the the sport like in general yeah um you know it's flat tracks definitely looked at you know on the lowest side of the racing which is you know like motocross and supercross match big guys and gnarly um yeah. and all the other stuff like off-road enduro but for us it's uh we have a two rider team uh me and cody cop yep um and uh and where our teams uh with you know we were out of california um at the start of the year and then through the season we're based in ohio um at at our mechanics uh, shop so it's uh it's it's a it's i love it i think it's awesome and uh it's definitely it's definitely unique um with the speeds we do and stuff you know on the miles we get up to 200 k's an hour and stuff so so no yeah yeah no front brakes and 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 drafting and whatnot so it's it's fun but yeah it's definitely like not as big as like the supercross or motocross scene in america yeah. even though you know we're still out of the ktm and and it's honestly it's unreal riding for them it's it's so sick you know it's uh it's a dream come true oh it would be for sure and do you guys get prize money oh. per per round and stuff like that yeah we get prize money and then like contingency and whatnot yeah. um the prize money is you know like i make more money on the contingency side you yeah, know with yeah, my personal yeah. sponsors and my team which very fortunate to have them yeah 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 sweet so i know your old boy mm-hmm. from like way back so for anyone that only knows max as the pro flat tracker um your old boy brett was uh had a cowie dealership forever and then brett whale kawasaki he had like some incredible riders that kind of came through that program based out of brizzy there was a time where i think oh seven I was like doing some magazine work and I was like hanging out in the in the shop kind of writing this yeah. like article and stuff. So that's like how far I go back. Yeah, yeah, um, sick. Yeah, with your old boy. So you've obviously been around bikes your your whole life. Like do you have any memories without bikes? Literally none. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since I grew up, you know, I'd used to go to work at Wales Kawasaki in the, you know, the little handheld thing and 
I grew up there from I was five when dad sold the business yeah. at Wales Kawasaki and then 07, 08, 09 he uh, ran the factory KRT team in Australia yeah so he had Reardon first two years uh, sorry the first year Reardon Mackie, Mackie and Hody yeah and then the second year he had Mackie, Hody, Georgie yeah and then he right. had Arbon, Georgie and uh, Ando yeah and yeah. like Catherine Prum came for a bit that's right Reedy did Supercross um, and then you know Takashi yeah, Katsuya, yeah. Taka. He, he came home to the outdoors. The great man. Yeah, he's a legend. Dude, I still talk to him all the time. He's so cool. He's Taka's the, the nicest guy in the world. I know, dude. Hey, the man. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you were around that environment. So how old would you have been in that kind of era? So if when he had the race team, I can't really remember 07 because he had this thing where I could never miss a day of school. Yeah, okay. So I, only two rounds I got to watch was, I think, Toowoomba and Coolum. probably, yeah. And then like Brizzy Supercross. And then I remember I just always used to want to go to the races so bad, and you'd never be like, nope. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was six, seven, eight when he had the factory team. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I used to go to Coolmore stuff, I used to just be the biggest pest ever. Yeah. <laughs> like I, was, I feel so bad for the riders. I'd always be asking them for jerseys, goggles. Yeah. But now I look back at it, and it was such a cool, you know, environment to grow up in, and. And like I remember, it, like Georgie used to come stay at the house and Arbon and stuff. It was sick. Yeah, that was like a good crew of of dude. Mackie especially as oh, well. Mackie's like still one of me one of me best mates. Like I go over and see Mackie still in America. Yeah, because he's over there now, eh? Yeah, yeah, he's I killing thought, it in the stunt business, but, dude. Killing it. Yeah, and like I used to go. Uh, he used to come at the hours and I yeah I was just the biggest pest like just, they wouldn't even be awake and I'd just be standing there at the side of the bed looking for them to wake up <laughs> that's so sick yeah so when did you first start riding like were you a kid that was just on the bike straight away pretty much yeah like I, dad I used to live at the Goldie KX500 just yeah. straight up <laughs> yeah straight up um, I, we used to live at the Goldie and at uh, Hope Island there yeah and uh, there used to be this big park now it's just all houses and uh he used to have like this little kill switch thing and I was three at the time and it had like a little lanyard on it he used to like ride me around like a American controller airplane whenever I get out of control I used to pull it yeah yeah so I did that for a year or whatever in the park but then I started racing when I was four at my catcher and stuff and, yeah yeah and then like yeah pretty much I can't remember life without bikes literally like, oh that's so sick yeah, I mean cool. it's such a it's such a cool way to grow up and I think about you know i went through like a stage where i was like nah i don't think i'll let my kid race and i don't let yeah. i think i'll let my kid blah 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 but yeah nowadays i think i've done just a full 180 on that because it's like you just you know if you got the right if you're not a dickhead dad yeah and you, you know you're not one of those guys like there's just so many cool lessons that you can kind of learn through a kid and like mates and for sure yeah like i, I, I to be honest i've only got like three or four friends from high school like yeah all my friends are bike people yeah it's crazy um but it is what it is you just like growing up it's like kind of tough when you're in high school because you don't get to see like on the weekends what they're all doing and whatnot but i wouldn't change it for anything like the people i've met over the world now and and in oz it's just they're like best mates yeah so it's it's so sick so did you ever can like did you want to race motocross like what was the flat track kind of well my mum and my dad used to road race Oh, ages okay. ago so like yeah dad's old now yeah yeah how's <laughs> but, he doing what's he up to uh he's doing pretty good we are uh, we He'd just a, be retired just doing yeah, his he thing. just pokes around yeah yells me whenever he gets a chance and whatnot that's awesome yeah no it's good good to be home and, and with the fam and stuff right now i got four sisters yeah so they're all up at the uh the house right now i just came down here and it's our first christmas i think in like eight years wow yeah so it hasn't been a, there hasn't been a domestic yet but we're oh, waiting for it for sure yeah, yeah it <laughs> just, happened. just to add some fun, <laughs> yeah. tequila vodka yeah. wine oh yeah it'll be on so yeah so they raced flat tra- uh they raced oh, yeah. road bikes and then yeah so they road raced um for a long time and then when i was born mum stopped road racing yeah and i think originally they just started flat track because when dad had whales he had like people ride flat track and whatnot and so i just started out in flat track um i never really did any like motocross ever um but i think i was like i wanted to do the i always wanted to do road racing like i've always wanted to do it um and then the flat track thing just like i was shit as a kid like i sucked and uh all of a sudden i just got to an age where it was like i might go to america and, and try it out and then yeah and went end up being pretty good a uh, couple of years there uh i was gonna go speedway and so i did that for three or four years but 
I just crashed so much and hated it. And yeah, on that actual speedway bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did that. Uh, for, yeah, let's say for three years, and then went back to flat track, and and then yeah, went to America, and yeah, it's doing pretty. I went to America my first year in 2016. So, dude, but, has it been that long now? Yeah. So I did two years in amateur, and then this is that year just gone was my fifth year as a professional. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's uh, yeah, that's wild. I didn't know that you'd been over there that that long. Mm, yeah. So it's been it's been pretty sweet yeah so and so growing up did you ever want to do motocross or it was just like no not till like dude, i didn't even ride motocross till about four years ago really yeah did, so yeah you just full flat tracker from oh, just, day one yeah just stick to the ground what what do you reckon that was uh i don't know i think i was just so bad like i used to ride like con and like i did condo motocross a couple of times but that's you know that's like more grass track and flowy and stuff but, like, the first time I actually went to, like, a full-blown motocross track was probably, like, 2017, 2016, or, you know, 2017, yeah. And then and then now in America, I ride motocross all the time. Yeah, okay. Because it's, like, you got to think about it. Even in Australia, like, motocross tracks, you can count, like, five off the top of your head. Yeah. You can ride every weekend. Flat tracks, they're not open on the weekends, you know. Like, they yeah. have to have, like, a practice day or a club day or whatever. Um, so, now that I'm older and I've been doing it, well now i know how to motocross and whatnot yeah. it's sort of like open you know like it, i can ride a lot more now yeah you just like because it's sort of bike time yeah, is you know, like contributing to your like fitness and stuff like that for sure because yeah. i'm sure you'd have to be super fit probably not as fit as motocross obviously yeah. but like there'd still be a level of fitness that you'd have to have to do what you do and because you're racing so many times in a day as well for sure yeah and like our races like they're not long like they're like six minutes is a short track eight minutes half mile tt and then the miles 10 minutes but you got to think like 200 meter track like or you know 300 meters or whatever and it's fast like there's been short tracks have done like 32 laps wow so like it's it at that point it's almost like more mentally mental than physical yeah 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 um but, but you do have to be you know fit and and motocross for me is like the best you know it's so gnarly and you got to like got to be so focused on ruts and stuff but yeah, yeah no i I do a fair bit of motocross now. I'm nothing special, but I do yeah. it. <laughs> are, are you, have you found you're getting better at it? Like oh, yeah, for it, sure. It's something that it'd be... You probably got sick bikes too. Yeah, yeah. So I was actually very fortunate. So in America, KTM gave me a practice bike and a motocross bike every year. Yeah. Um, for training, which is super sick. Um, what I, bike do you ride? I ride a KTM 450. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So motocross and on the flat track, obviously. and uh, And yeah, so... I went out ahead. I went ahead and you know got nice suspension and stuff and and then you just like I get interested in things and then like I really want to get better at them. Yeah. So like now I go motocross and then I'm like, all right, you actually hit a race flat track. You know, don't go yeah, kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, I really get into it and it's like it's funny because you spend so much time doing it now. Yeah. You go to the track and you're just like always trying to find ways to improve yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So it's sick. Will you be able to do motocross at home? Do you think? Yeah, I've been riding a fair bit of moto. Oh, um, sick. So KTM Australia um, let me a bike. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, they said, you know, I can ride motocross, flat track. So I've been doing a, I've been going out to MX Farm a lot. and Yeah, sweet. And then, uh, yeah, so that's been awesome. I think, wait, 20, 27th, I reckon next week we do like a bit of a ride day at MX Farm. You keen? Yeah. Yeah, I'm you, down. If you're keen. Yeah. 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 Bring Anyone that's out. listening, if this comes out before then, come and ride with us. Yeah, yeah. I've been wanting to ride out there for a little bit it's one of my favorite tracks yeah it's and like sick. i want to just do camp and just chill yeah. you know it's a good spot honestly like, oh dude it, except so it being good. 150,000 degrees some days yeah um, yeah but like you get there in the morning i try and get there as early as possible the yeah. track's awesome yeah and then it just <laughs> and then Slowly by the end of it it's just like dusty and i'm like nah i'm out yeah 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 flat tracks back <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like i'm not now to run like, yeah i don't ride this shit nah. uh dude i always think about uh whenever millsy rides motocross because he's just so fucking fast miller like, is the most underrated rider in australia glad you said it he is unbelievable eh? Mate, you take him to a road race he'll just kill it motocross kill it supercross, supercross kill, it. kill it flat, flat track, track kill, kill it. it like dude's, <laughs> dude's legit well that's that was gonna be one of my questions for you later on because he won the north brizzy cup yeah and it's like you're a factory rider <laughs> for ktm and it's like, could Jack be a professional flat tracker if he decided to? Not? Yeah, he could. Really? Yeah, yeah. So he could go to America and win. You think? Uh, not straight away. Uh, well, it depends on the track. But like, 
on a TT, I think he could. Yeah. Um, but like the some of the tracks we and we ride, as I said, totally different. Like the half miles are so slippery. Yeah. So like you got to have the smoothest throttle hand in like it's like it's all about traction. Yeah. So I think on TTs he would like kill it. Um, but he'd struggle, but like Noel Miller, it would take him like two races and he'd be like yeah. good. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's incredible. Um, Maddie sent me a video from North Brizzy Cup of like it was maybe in one of the 450 finals and he just like sent it in rode the wall and was like fully leaned over right. on the wall and then the wall just abruptly ends yeah. and everyone's looking like oh no no because it was like he was stuck to it and he just went yeah and just like wheelied off the thing landed just straight on the power gun you're just like dude you don't don't care like what are you up to i was i was in front of him for like the first uh, it, so like how they had it this year was different but it is such a fun event. So um, sick. They had it like points over all the rounds. So he ended up winning the actual cup race when like previous years that would, he would win. And mm. like he won like in my eyes, like that, the cup race. And, uh, and he rode so good. Cause like the A laps, I was in front of him, like the first laps, I didn't hear him. And then all of a sudden I just hear this. And I'm like, <laughs> surely no one's riding the wall. I look across the wall and there's not one lick of dirt on it next time i come around and he just squares me up and just showers me i'm like and then come around the next time he is just on the wall just on the clutch throttle like <laughs> i'm like fuck bro <laughs> oh he's such a savage eh? he's and like you do you ride motocross with him and he'll put in a legitimate 40 minute moto yeah that's like cool. there's not many dudes that no. legitimately riding the thing as hard as he can for that amount of time no. and just like he can move man and his his corner speed yeah is just mental on he, a dirt bike didn't he like i think he did like a conondale classic or some conondale oh battle in the bush yeah he, someone yeah, said yeah. he was winning it yeah 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 there was like there was uh i think joel rizzo beat him on the 125 okay but i mean joel rizzo used to be yeah one of the best there, riders yeah. in australia yeah. you know and then he's way smaller as well <laughs> but yeah like he almost won that and then i think did he win on the 450 at Battle in the Bush? Were you? Yeah, you went at Rones was there, eh? Yeah, Rones rode. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, like he was just, yeah, unreal. Rode three bikes, yeah. all like did Franco's every... Franco's just slaving over him. Oh, dude. And like, I think Franco might be the most underrated mechanic in Australia <laughs> as well. Mate, he puts up with Miller. He oh. uh, he puts it... Miller... Uh, sorry, Franco puts in the hours. Oh, yeah, dude. It's underrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Franco's race shop for anyone that yeah. is looking to get their bike done the same bike the same guy that does jack miller's bike can do your bike too Mate, does it all too road bikes just ask yep, him he's into yep. it now yeah yeah he'll fix your lawnmower <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he gets a chance you get a phone call whenever this gets aired oh man oh, fuck i got a toro yeah, turn yeah, up. yeah 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 no I've, yeah i've got a i've got a ride on in here. yeah thanks bro. zero turn yeah cheers gypsy <laughs> but yeah dude millsy on a i think he could maybe when he retires we need to do a video where we follow him around and racing every professional series. He would 100% qualify for an AMA national. Yeah. Well, 100%. I honestly think, I honestly think if you gave him like six months to like fully like get bikes done, train, whatever, he could like top three in MX national. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. No disrespect to any of the riders. No. But like he is that good. Yeah. Like, he's incredible. Yeah. I reckon if he like... <clears throat> And dude, signing with KTM yeah. is like the perfect... People he, People are like, oh, you know, you're going from the best bike to KTM. And it's like, well, he's going from the best road bike to one of the best overall bike yeah. manufacturers. And that, like KTM is like a company, like they'll just keep working. Like that yeah. bike will be good. Like in, you know, it, it is good. It's one, it's one race. Yeah, it's so one race this year, yeah. And so like I think like th this coming year or you know next year it'll be fully like yeah a top top bike like yeah. they don't stop no nah, no nah, for you can sort of see the way that they've like not backed out of other racing but like you can see that their focus has shifted to getting that you know mm -hmm. moto gp title it's like really the only one that they don't have literally like they and like like what was it 20 years ago like it was just like uh, and then yeah. now it's just like you go to a motor track and there's literally 80% no KTM yeah. yeah or KTM group you yeah know? like it's they're the best bikes yeah and so you got you got a guy like Jack 
that wants to ride everything. Yeah. Like he's got 300 two strokes. He's got one two fives. He's got two fifties. He's got three fifties. He's got four fifties. He's, hey, he's, he's got, got four fifties. It's a flat tracker. Yeah. You know, like he literally has every kind of KTM. So it's like for it's that, that brand, literally they couldn't have got a perfect, more perfect ambassador. But I just think the year he retires from MotoGP, he needs to just not jump off the program, just stay fit as fuck, and then do a AMA motocross, do like the beach race, do Everything. you know, do a flat track in the states, like jump on a speedway, but like for sure, because he's the kind of guy that actually could cross over so many dis. And dude, even have you seen him in a fucking go kart? No, I haven't seen him in a go kart. Psycho, bro. I watched your YouTube video there, and I died laughing dude you how gnarly was you, that bro <laughs> you guys are just poking along the shoes on leathers and everything <laughs> yeah. here's miller on the go-kart getting after it bro f- like so fast too insanely fast so i mean i'm sure that yeah. he could probably jump in a car and do some damage as all well. the all the au falcon training oh yeah at the miller ranch yeah off. that's what happens when you just grow up a full farm Absolutely. boy like we're at just uh at daniel sanders place mm. he's before. a weapon too absolute psychopath <laughs> like in the best way but he he's the same like me and me and Rones are there and we, we were driving oh Griff was there too actually sorry bro uh, we are like driving down the hill to his where his tracks are and I'm like this is what happens when you have a kid on a farm with like that's into moto that's actually into moto yeah like there's so many times where you'd get a, a kids that they've got a farm and they've got bikes but they like don't really yeah. ride that much you know For but sure. then you get a guy like sanders or millsy their kids that were brought up on a farm that had bikes just rode and whatever. all they did yeah. was ride bikes and it's like they just end up at you know 100%. at the top of the sport and i'm a firm believer of like you ride everything you're gonna get good on everything like yeah miller would have rode like probably some absolute shit boxes yeah yeah <laughs> actually i don't even probably he 100 percent would have he would have rode ag bikes whatever and that's why i think you know he it's contributed to how good he is on everything yeah because you ride stuff with like brakes don't work or whatever you learn yeah no definitely and then like driving those shit box yeah, cars exactly. welding them up yourself like mm-hmm. fixing them breaking them for sure yeah yeah when, when he was in front of you for those laps at the um brizzy cup could you see like different stuff that he does that like a normal flat tracker doesn't do oh, but it's sure. still fast so like in america it's totally different like it's riding style as well oh really yeah like you gotta like because it's so slick at some tracks you're really trying to like be careful with your weight and whatnot yeah and that was like the biggest thing for me coming back like you can move around and you can just whack the throttle here way more and be like loose and you know move around and like miller was pulling these shapes like his head's under the bar and he's like feet are just everywhere i'm like bro like <laughs> how did he learn this <laughs> like yeah. he raced a motor gp bike all year and then he come over here and just like just hanging off of 450 like what <laughs> and the thing's wedged dude it's oh, on methanol yeah. like <laughs> nothing of his is like poorly prepped either like franco kills it oh yeah like they're fast he's a good rider they all handle good yeah. but he is hanging off it oh it's so sick can you pull is there like a good video we could watch of like you doing a few of these tracks like i want to get a visual of you doing your thing yeah um well it's kind of i don't know it's kind of like is there uh, anything on youtube you reckon uh probably not like certain clips um what about insta insta there would be stuff yeah so like yeah, go on insta maybe Yeah, because I want to I want to see some clips, bro. I want to see the different bikes, the different styles. So when you when you came over, like you got no front brake yeah. over there, but then you come back here. So Are this, you actually using it? This is a mile here. It oh, looks, so this is the mile. This it looks like pretty boring, and like you can see how tall I am. But like this here, we are just like flat out fifth gear, like we're in it, just wide open, wide open. Really? Yeah. So right here, probably doing 150, 160 k's. Fuck. And then, yeah, that's a corner, but there's like, um, go, go that one. Yeah, that one there. That's Peoria. So this isn't, yeah. But like, so we got front brake there. Because um, the front brake, like, so from when I, whenever I've ridden any flat track, which is not very often, I'll be kind of like using my front brake to almost like trailer, lock the front yeah. tire so that it actually 
for so sure. that, that it knifes and then you can like kind of cock it back this way and then yeah. get on the throttle but yeah so like i don't know if i have any like ktm ones but like some short tracks instead of because we got no front brake see like not a moto guy at all as you can tell yeah um some tracks with no front brake it's we slow down by pushing the front end under yeah yeah. so we'll slow down by like scrubbing speed that's yeah. what we call it it's a bit different to a normal scrub but um i don't know if i have any like there's no here on the ktm but if you go way down this one on the cowie um and that that was a while ago that was at the farm so we have a track at our house oh sick uh i keep going it's i think it was 19 <clears throat> just yeah right here so that bottom right yeah, that one there. So oh, like, so this is at your place. This is my farm, yeah. So we'll throw the front end under, like, the slow speed. You can sort of see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're, like, intentionally kind of, like, low siding, basically. Yeah, And then like, you catch it by going opposite lock and then the throttle. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you just throw the front end and slow it down a little bit. Fuck, so does that feel sketchy at 100 and... <laughs> we don't do it on the big tracks because it's all about being smooth. But, like, yeah. little short tracks, like, that's what we'll do. And then, like just to slow yourself down and it, sometimes it'll it like sets you better for the corner yeah 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 um but yeah it's i don't know it's different at first for sure you know going from aussie setup but you don't you just break like you just charge yeah um it's different but once you get the hang of it it's it's sick it's good feeling so how much does the the whole front tire thing like obviously like it's a wider bigger diameter front tire like and then smaller on the front how much does that change it uh it's not as sh- like not as sharp turning obviously because we don't have yeah it's like grip. more draggy as it's well. more like it's almost like a like you got to like almost like a weight tied to your front end almost feels yeah, like yeah. it's real like heavy feeling where like knobby you can move it around way easy and then like it's honestly now i prefer to ride with it because you got more lean like lean angle sort of thing yeah um like so and it's the same f- feeling the whole way around the corner so yeah well not like the whole tire so because it's like one big circle yeah yeah like knobbies are just like yeah you've you know, got different yeah. contact points yeah so yeah, okay. but yeah no it's just more of a, like it's all feel really yeah um for me and then did, how long did it take you to get used to the speed no nah, not long because so, i did supermoto as well oh ah, right right like i used to let's go supermoto dad when i was younger i pretty much did everything except motocross yeah so you did some road riding as well like yeah road well I didn't do any road racing, but I just did a lot of motard. Yeah. And um, I remember one time when I was, because Kawasaki Australia used to sponsor me. Yeah. When I was a junior. And uh, there was a, like, they called me and I said, hey, you want to try a Ninja 300? And I was like, yeah, yeah, perfect. And uh, and I went out there and we went to Willow Bank. And at that time I was 14, so I was riding a 250. Yeah. At uh, Willow Bank. And if you know Willow Bank, it's literally the most boring track in the world. It's just like up down up down yeah and uh <clears throat> they called the paperclip and i was so they like come out and ride and their team riders were there at the time well the 600 rider crashed and put the bike like into the concrete wall so the yeah. bike was destroyed oh. and then the 300 riders both of them crashed and they had one spare bike there and dad's like nah you're not doing it i'm not, not trusted him no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so you didn't end up never ever it. rode a road bike oh dude you're probably so big now though. oh I'm way how tall are you now i'm six four like six, pushing four, six yeah. five yeah Fuck. so yeah i'm way too tall um and then yeah i don't know i'm just i'm i i'm happy with where i'm at honestly yeah, like yeah. it's it's gone pretty good for me um you know over in america racing living the dream so yeah. i wouldn't change it for anything you got yeah. a good team behind me and they support me 100 percent, back me and and yeah wow oh, that's so sick so when you started racing flat track what's the age that you can start start four at? i think i think it's four like motocross is, is it still is it still like there's a good junior scene out there for it nowadays or oh uh, it's it's good like i was watching the um at brizzy cup the the 50s i don't even know if they had 50s but there's not many young young kids but like i don't know it's sort of like everything like everything's gone like electronic sort of wise you know yeah like, um there's not many younger kids but the 85 class at brizzy cup was hectic really like they were going for it sick yeah and then like June was 50s, bill still in that yeah bill actually <laughs> went back from the 40 <laughs> onto the 85 <laughs> now um i actually surprised billy last my seen him was literally five foot two and now he's six one dude right where the fuck did that come from i was I, and he comes out and goes 
Hey, Max. Hey, man. Hey, hey, you go. Go. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Did you eat Bill? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it looks good for young Aussie talent. And it's really cool to see, like, like previously before me, like, we had, like, Luke Goff, Kirkness. Um, you know, everyone knows Kirkness. And, uh, and then, like, Jace uh, Castles as well went over for a bit. But, like, I've gone over there now. And I'm, you know, making money and, and, and on a good team. And, you know, I've got Tom Drain next year. And there's and the, every year now, like, for the last two or three years, it's been four or five Aussies come over for amateur nationals. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, like, sick from my end looking at that. And then, yeah, there's more coming this uh, 23 as well. So yeah. I think it's, like, there's, like, three or four Aussies coming over next year, race pro and stuff. So it's sick. Like, it's good to see. Yeah. And I think that it takes a guy like you know not that you're the first guy that's done no, it but you know like you're on a factory team yeah. you're, you're winning races over there and it's like you know for for me as like an aussie motorsport fan like i've really started trying to follow you and like support no, thank you what, what you're doing because it's just dope to have an aussie at the top level on the best team mm. you know like winning races yeah. and i feel like that stuff i mean you probably don't feel like it just in your everyday life but you know if you step back and have a look like there is a follow down effect to that 85 Mm -hmm. class and i think that yeah it's pretty pretty important to have you know someone like you over there flying the flag and then especially coming home doing some local races like the red bull helmet is you know this dope thing that ever like when a red bull helmet's at the north brizzy cup on on someone like you i mean it's a cool yeah it is really cool for those no, those and, younger guys and i love as i said i love going to them and you know seeing all the kids race and stuff it's it's sick and you know miller shows up like, that's another thing why miller's underrated because <laughs> whenever do you see a match be right to go to the north brisbane cup like, yeah, what yeah. is the north brisbane cup yeah, yeah. and miller's like yeah i gotta be there <laughs> for rothing yeah. for it bro well how so how's we did battle in the bush and then the next weekend was Toowoomba Sunny States. Yeah. And he got back, him and Franco just full burnt the midnight all, got back to Townsville. And then Millsy sends a group text and goes, just got home, boys, like all sweet. And we're like, fuck yeah, oi, Sunny States at Toowoomba next weekend, you can. And he's like, fuck it, let's turn it around. And he was Man. literally going to do it and his mum shut him down. His mum was like, Jack you're fucking dreaming you're not <laughs> racing motocross oh, two, week, two weekends in a row frank was like oh well whatever we'll do it yeah frank just gets in there and gets going yeah but you know asb came like people say that oh why would you go there and, and you know because he can't use data he, he's not on a not on a competitive yeah. bike like he's not going to win the race but it's like that's the most fun weekend yeah like that that you can have so it's like i feel like we shouldn't be worried that he's not no gonna chance. win the race yeah, like, and look at it in a negative way we should be looking like oh there's a guy that races for a living gets paid millions of dollars literally and is under like the most insane amount of pressure guess what he still fucking loves his job yeah and he still loves riding and he'd do it even if he wasn't getting paid that's like the most brilliant message yeah 100 percent. and it, everyone like in australia just like writes like there's so many facebook warriors in australia like they're yeah. just the first ones to grill you but like no one ever looks at it like like he comes over here like and just promotes ASBK by him doing that race. He bought Hooky yeah. and Schroeder yeah. over, or you know Hookies and Aussie, and uh, they bought bought yeah, their bikes. fully funded the whole program. Yeah, and like imagine how much it would have grown just in that one race. Yeah, like, and then like there's other Aussies, you know, like Santa Angus. He was there and Kelso, and you know, it looks so good when they all come back and race. And yeah. like Miller's just like loving it, like just poked around. He's and he's like the guy that's kind of led that whole 100%. charge you yeah. know and like the fan just the the fan interactions i wasn't able to go this year which was a bit of a bummer but yeah. like the fans the way that they interact with him the like i don't know just give because at phillip island you get you go there and you know you get a chance to see jack miller do his thing yeah. on like a on, a on big that weekend. big stage yeah. but there's the act like the accessibility is just not there so you go to a, like an asbk event and yeah. that just there's so much more access you can get so much closer to you know to him and the action and you can just has like that more grassroots sort of feel yeah and like brizzy cup like he is just like non-stop there's just people going in and out of his pit and like not one second was he like all right guys let's like let's chill out he was just having a good time and and i think that takes more you know guts and more what you love to go do a race that you haven't prepared for for the whole year yeah like it it's i think it's yeah it's it's sick because like no one 
no one's ever going to race MotoGP and then go, oh, you know what, let's go do one round to yeah. just get Franco to prepare three bikes yeah. um, and then just go, yeah. Like, no one's going to do that. Yeah. He goes and does it because he loves it and he wants to help the sport grow and yeah. he wants to help young Aussies. Yeah, and he, he does, you know. 100%. And like, the way that... Yeah, people... Uh, yeah, you're right. People just don't... I don't think they understand how no. much of a fucking legend that dude actually is. Well, like, like even, like, Harry Voigt was there as well. He's killing it. Yeah, dude. Um, but, like imagine how much imagine how, how he feels you know going there and getting beat like he's just doing it because he loves it but it's still like you know what i mean like it's yeah, different yeah 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 and and i think that you know it's just that genuine love of the game 100%, that's and all it's, it is. it's so hard to find especially at that level where there's like because he's a high paid guy you know he's, like you, yeah, he's you, one of the top four in australia for motorsports yeah you can't be in motor gp and not be like this super high paid athlete and yeah just to have that level of humility and yeah just to show up purely for the love Mm -hmm. of the game like there's just not that many people out there on that level that would do that you know no chance so it's it's super cool and and it matters i reckon like it really matters to the people that are there and it matters to like the culture of aussie motorsports and and i think like you said we've got it we do have a sick aussie culture of motorsports yeah. right now like you got the lawrences oh fuck i'm not even gonna name names because there's literally two, there's tons there's two speedway many. there's like 20 over there racing in europe yeah there's so many aussie like fast kids and uh, and women adults and guys women killing it like, yeah. like you, you just go to brizzy at like uh Nudgy on the weekend i went to the darcy ward race oh yeah 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 and like helping my buddy out and there's like there was probably like i don't know like 16 riders there and like 14 of them are racing in europe yeah, yeah and yeah. they're from brisbane it's like what that's so see it's it means though that yeah i mean we definitely have to then at the grassroots level here we've got to make sure that we're putting on enough events and because like does hatches still run events yeah hatches still going yeah yeah yeah. but like yeah i I don't know like you just got to keep growing and everyone has to keep putting forward and yeah and and just getting the kids involved which is so hard these days because uh, there's like, so much competition and technology and like yeah like it's the games now like ps4 or what a ps5 whatever um like mx sim yeah mx sim <laughs> <laughs> uh like they can just like whip it up at their home and like yeah. like the people making money now from just like online games which is like dude i had no idea how much money some kids made by creating minecraft lobbies and stuff oh it's ridiculous like i actually had no idea that there's i was watching this guy the other day he was doing a podcast and he was talking about like youtube and he just has like all these channels that are making like 30 grand a month and he has like 20 of these channels like just fuck the dude's just like an internet wizard he's probably never seen the sun in his life either (laughs) and he started (laughs) by making minecraft lobbies and selling them when he was like seven to eight years old yeah so there's these hustlers that have just been in business for fucking 30 years by the time they're 35 <laughs> and they're uh and they're just like murdering it off like you said like games yeah. i had no idea that it was that now yeah it's crazy like it's half the youtube scene these days is literally just like online gaming and stuff yeah yeah which is like crazy did you have you say you never got into games that much oh, i play you know at night i have like a, a P- playstation but yeah, I just play with my friends. It's just more for a laugh. But yeah, when I was a, when I was a young kid, I didn't have anything. Um, I just like went on the farm and yeah, helped out on the farm, ride whatever you know. Um, I had a couple of good friends that lived close by, and like I remember as a young kid, we used to have everyone had Kalex one forties. Yeah, yeah. So like my mate Kaishan, Kaisy, and then uh, me, and then then you know, like there was like Jared and a few others that we all had 140s and we all had tracks in our backyard so like back then you had like the home phone you'd be like yeah. calling them like which track we're gonna go ride and so we'd all like friday and race call cash and friday afternoon from school and used to beg my dad to drive me to his place it was 10 minutes away and we used to just ride all afternoon and then like we used to have like rides through the week and it's so sick like knowing that when i was a kid i got to do that and yeah. like it's not that common anymore to say like yeah where like when dad was a kid or you know when you guys were kids it was just like everyone did that yeah um and it's just slowly fiddling away which i think it's terrible because it's everyone's going inside as i said so um but 
yeah so but it's it's cool and like he used to live across the road from the school so we used to go ride the bikes up onto the school and like go ride the <laughs> long jump pit and stuff but uh yeah no it's cool and then and then yeah just we sort of you know you get too big and too tall and yeah for the 140s but yeah, yeah. so it's good fun though so when when did the when did you feel like you had enough talent to maybe go pro at the flat track stuff yeah so like the first two years we did the amateur nationals so yeah. 17 no sorry 16 17 so how old would you be i was 14 and 15 yeah um because that early, no i was yeah 14 and fit 14 no no i was 15 and 16 so i turned uh through the year you know i change age yeah, yeah um so if whatever i was late 14 early 15 um it was my first year and uh yeah i I we just, that was sort of just like you know like let's go have some fun and see how you go whatever um and had you been training like a bunch at home and putting in like a, we, yeah we, we rode a fair bit of 19s and uh <clears throat> and then like very fortunate my dad and he you know he's he loves the sport as well and and he you know put a lot of time and effort into me once he sold the race team and you know got, got out of the race team yeah he just we we went racing every week um and so like the first year was just like a look at it and uh i ended up winning the mile as an amateur in the 40 class and then sort of just like the rest of the week was just like a downhill spiral yeah um and i ended up second in one class third one class and fourth <clears throat> and then the next year i went over i wanted to go for the horizon award but ended so up, this is like the loretta's of, it's like literally like the loretta's okay. same sort of thing yeah it's like a it's a week of racing yeah we have we rest in the all four tracks we rest in the mile the half mile short track tt same bike same bike for the whole week yeah so like you can have so like the 450 dtx the 450 mod that sort of thing but my first year i only had one bike so i just yep. rode the one bike in both classes yeah next year we um someone lent us a bike yeah and uh and so i had a, a good bike for the bigger tracks and you know in the mod class um and then yeah so we did that uh we did that and then i ended up second in every class and just missed out on the horizon um so and like i was racing by then the top amateurs and so we were like you know let's go try for a full season next year just have some fun and like typical dad like he bought this like eight foot box trailer yeah and there was like f- three bikes in there like a hundred tires like it's just everything was just crammed in that's so sick you couldn't have fit a cigarette paper in there yeah <laughs> and then we had the rv and dad bought it for 12 uh 12 grand oh no 11 grand or something full rv for yeah in like south carolina and that rv lasted us three years and never broke down really yeah and so your old boy was just wheeling the thing the whole time you, you oh yeah there? yeah yeah that's so, so sick yeah so like my first two years that race, would have been the best time dude 100 percent. so my first two years me and dad were there for 10 months yeah side by side let me tell you there's a few arguments yeah. but <laughs> i would never change it for the world i learned so much yeah about racing about life um and then my dad you know he you don't like we're literally together 24 hours a day we got a yeah. motorhome so yeah. and he was a busy dude too so oh, yeah. like back in the day when he was like running teams and dealers like he's a legit businessman as well oh, and yeah. like any time not to say that he's like not putting in time with you but anytime you're that level of a business guy like it is very hard to then divvy out like the rest of your sure. time to five kids you know yeah so exactly. that block of time for you two guys would have just been like that would have been super special yeah no nah, for sure and like when you what like it was only like four years ago five years ago now but when you're in the moment you're like oh, yeah you don't think that much no, of it, you, don't, eh? you don't you're just like oh dad's yelling at me and this sucks yeah. whatever and then you like look back at it now and it's like that's like a massive sacrifice like mum came over for like two months yeah so he's away from mum he didn't see any of the other kids for nine months whatever the dog the farm like yeah. it's like massive it and now i look back at it and i and i appreciate it so much um Did and you tell him that oh yeah, yeah yeah and then like it and then also i got some like unreal friends like briar and Shayna and bronson and alex and you know Corey and <laughs> maddie g my best mate over there like they would like let us come stay and like fully help us out dons and that like we had so many places over america where we'd just park up and yeah. i remember as soon as we'd park up i'm outside i'm like i gotta get out of here i'm hanging with my friends <laughs> yeah 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 but you know like you appreciate it like now so much more as i said and then 
yeah like there's so many sick stories on the road too like my dad he just he doesn't give a shit either like he'll just tell you how it is yeah yeah so i remember one time we're in tucson arizona yeah. and it's like 110 degrees oh, hot as balls yeah dude. air con doesn't work hasn't worked for like three months <laughs> so you're sleeping in this bed and you don't have any blankets on mm. in the rv and you're just looking at the ceiling for hours on hours like, night. when am i gonna fucking yeah. fall asleep yeah exactly and dad's like I'm not fixing the air con it's too much money and i'm like fucking things 12 12 grand dad just get an air con <laughs> yeah yeah and uh so then i remember we're in Arizona and dad spat the dummy he's like this is just too fucking hot <laughs> he drove to an RV store and uh I remember we're getting it fixed and we go take off and we're getting lunch or something we had two bikes in the trailer always, always and uh like push bikes and we come back and the guy that owns the RV store he's like hey we've got an issue and dad's like oh come on tell us and he's like we've dented your roof and dad goes dented it how do you dent a wooden roof and he's like, oh, you know, like someone stood on the roof and we didn't realize it was so soft. Like this RV was a shitbox. <laughs> Have you got was, a picture of it on here? Oh, I don't think so. I have it on my phone that I'll show you. Um, That's awesome. And the and the roof was like full of water. It had so many leaks in it. And, <laughs> and this guy stands on the roof and he's fucking full through it. <laughs> and, and like dad's like looking around like trying to get a free egg on you out of this now he's yeah. like full business <laughs> mode engaged yeah. and uh he looks at this guy and he goes who who repaired the uh who got up there and they're all like looking around and the guy points to literally the biggest guy <laughs> at the fucking facility <laughs> and dad goes you're kidding you get mcgilla gorilla to get on my roof <laughs> and this guy was like so embarrassed and dad was just oh, typical dad that is so good yeah like he's ruthless oh eh? he don't give a shit and like as I said, the story is like, I remember one time we were at a car park in California and we spent all day riding at Milestone. Now it's closed, but they put a flat track there. Oh, yeah. Uh, for a couple of years. And so we spent all day riding um, <laughs> and it got night time. And like, obviously, you know, America's got some like bad areas. Yeah, like, yeah. Like terrible. Especially kind of around there. Like if you go in the wrong spot around there. Oh, too. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And especially in Cali. And so we were in like... A, like a bad area and so dad like it's night time and like you know how to stay in uh you know how to stay in uh walmart car parks in america yeah, yeah. and so excuse me and so he goes in there and it's a we're staying at a uh home depot car park yeah and at uh like one thirty in the morning oh yeah one o'clock someone knocks on the door and i hear dad whisper in the back and he goes hey don't say anything it's just a worker and i was like yeah perfect i won't say anything so i pretend i'm still asleep and the rv door just swings open bro no, <laughs> swings <shit>. open <laughs> and i'm looking and i'm like out the window i'm looking and he, and she like looks across she looks in the back room and like dad had a it was a chick yeah yeah full crackhead really yeah yeah so dad had the dad always had the back door to the back closed yeah. off yeah so he looks in there she looks in down the back can't see because dad's got the door closed she looks to her right she's like yep bang that's home she like climbs in the rv and i'm like looking at her i'm at the top and i have like this little curtain thing i'm like looking around the curtain and she sees me and she's like hello <laughs> hello and i'm like 16 i'm like oh fuck we're getting shot i'm sorry we're getting shot yeah, there's yeah, no other chance yeah, yeah. and she like freaks out she runs out closes the door and dad goes i hear in the back go was she in the RV? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. And then 10 minutes later, we fall back asleep. Didn't even think about locking the door. I don't know. We just, we just don't care. <laughs> I think the lock was broken at the point or whatever. And so 10 minutes later, the door... all made out of balsa wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is like flex. And, <laughs> and like door swings open again. And you just hear dad. He perks up. He's mad now. Fucking back door swings open. Oi, get out. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I was just trying to tell you someone's trying to break into your, your trailer. Dad's like full in the undies, like pokes his head out, can't see anyone on the trailer, get the fuck out, and then slams the door. Next warm up we go to. No shit. And so you just moved after that oh, one. Oh, yeah, we moved after that one. That was like. Fuck. We, we drew the straw. But like, you have like, that's the thing. Like, you, on the road, you have so many cool stories. About, oh, yeah, dude. Like, you would know, like, just yeah. travel in the world. It's sick. I'm actually trying to do a road trip across America next year at some oh, point. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah, like, probably sometime in the summer, trying to like line it up. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. It's just a crazy country, man. Like oh, it's wild. When you go from state to state too, it just changes so much. I mean, 
in, in Oz, like it's, you know, very similar size, but just we don't really have culture changes no. in the way that you do in America. Like, you know, the people in California are so different to the people in Arizona, which is so different to the people in Colorado. Which it's is like so, you go to a different country yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, I don't think... I'll show you later. I can't yeah, no, nah, it's all good. People, I don't think, understand that when it comes to America is that it's just such like a... Uh, just a varied place man yeah. just culturally the landscape wise i mean even uh, like what what states would you have driven through so i've been there? to like every state really already yeah. that's so, so sick we i hadn't this start of this year i hadn't been to um to uh washington yeah. and uh oregon yeah but we did a round up there this year oh cool and so i got to see those um, but yeah, now I've done every every state pretty much. Like I think I'm only missing like two or something. But That's like, sick. We've been all the way up to Maine. We went to Laconia. Then we drove past it to go to Maine to look at it. Um, and yeah, been to Florida, been down the bottom to Cali, and then up there now to north, so yeah. northwest. So yeah, now I've seen I've seen pretty much it all. And then like, are you flying to the, the races these days? Anything over like twelve hours, I fly. Yeah, because I, I have my own. I got a Ford Transit. And, yeah. I don't know. I kind of like driving. You see some stuff and yeah, dude. And then like it's when good I, attitude. yeah, yeah. And then when like I go, like I get you know, like uh, travel and whatever. But I like going and like take my van because then like if I go to my mate's place, I can I got my moto bike in the back. And yeah, do some moto yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like I sort of try and if we're not slammed with races, like sometimes we'll have three week breaks. So you just spend the time. On yeah, the road, so I'll just, just go down hang out you know like the Bowmans and stuff and yeah we'll go you know when i go to florida hang out with rispoli and you know then i just sort of just float around everywhere so yeah that's awesome bro. it's sick that's living the dream really yeah 100 percent. you know like just to be on tour you're getting paid yeah you know you you really just got to be ready for these races which you love doing and yeah you just get to kind of like pick and choose for sure you know, yeah. what, what you do that's super dope it's it's really cool that at your age as well you can like recognize that it's cool to drive places and it's cool to take in the scenery and sure. are, are you by yourself a lot of time when you're doing yeah, driving or? all by myself dude that's fucking cool man yeah it's, it's like, like a very underrated thing that you're doing yeah so like in 2020 when covid hit dad went home like yeah. he was like i can't do it you know mum's at home by herself which is totally understandable i'm like yeah go home it's cool yeah. and uh he went home and so i did 2020 I drove to every round by myself. I got the bikes ready all through the week by myself. Um, and then on the weekends, I had... Was like, that because the team wasn't... Or were you a privateer? I was a privateer in 2020. Okay, so yeah, yeah. And so you did two years with your old boy. Yeah, I did driving. 17, 18. No. Yeah. Uh, I did 18, 19. Yeah. 18, privateer, started out. And then in 19, I signed with the team. Yeah. It didn't work out. So seven rounds in, we went separate ways. Yeah. Um, and then in 2020 we went back to doing our own thing on last year's bikes like dad was this point he said this is the last year i'm going to help you fund it like you know and he funded most of it like not even gonna lie uh, i had a few sponsors that helped me out pretty good but like i was working back home you know for three months as a carpenter as yeah. a laborer trying to get some more money um but like he was pretty much funding everything and uh i think probably for him though the fact that you did get a job and did do some labor and like yeah. you know probably just more so that you were prepared to contribute is yeah, probably yeah. what made makes a difference to to a dad you know yeah yeah and so he was just like this last year you know 2020 that i helped fund it and then COVID hit and he was sort of like oh we can do you can come home and you know work and and we'll get ready for next year i'm like no nah, i feel like i feel pretty good so i stayed over there we didn't race for three months nothing happened for three months and like in america it was like it was scary like we didn't Really? We didn't leave the house or nothing. I was staying with Briar and Shana at the time for the first month and a half. And then I went to um, Bri Bronson Bauman, yep. uh, which is their brothers. And he lives in Illinois. But the first three months, we didn't do nothing. Like, we didn't do anything. What like, was the vibe like? It was like, it's weird. Like, uh, in PA, we didn't do any riding. Yeah. Um, because everything was closed. So you're in Pennsylvania yeah. at this point. Pennsylvania, yeah. Briar and Shana's. Like, everything was closed. Mask on everywhere. Like, everyone was, like, super, like, whoa. Yeah. And then... And then in Illinois, it was a bit more laid back because you're in the middle of the country. And like I was, I went at Bronson's house, his parents have a track and stuff. So we rode there a lot. And, yeah. You know, like it, and I broke my arm in that three months and, and whatnot. But 
Um, How's that? Do you crash, obviously? Yeah, yeah. Just So what's a crash for you look like? Most like a common crash on flat track. Uh, Have you like, got it? Uh, yeah, I got, I got taken out this year and broke my leg. Oh, fuck. So I got fifth in the points this year, um, which kind of sucks because the other two years I've been second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's it's just like a traditional like slide out but we're going so fast you know yeah 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 because i guess i've just never really seen like a big crash like that on a you know flat track bike for sure yeah so this was these like low siding mostly or like is there dudes that have big high sides oh yeah we have some monster crashes Fuck, we need to look up a try and find a crash reel just put, yeah flat <laughs> american track. flat track crash reel let's go i want to see some shit so there you go. This is so this, this is, is yours. This is my on the mile, Kentucky mile. So what number are you? Eighteen. Oh, duh. oh. So that's probably like a hundred and eighty. Oh, bro. That was gnarly, dude. Sorry for the people that are watching that can't see this. So you just get like a tiny little nudge, eh? Yeah, it's because it's so tires are so slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it's just like sort of like a racing incident but yeah you don't really you don't try and bump into people and you're doing 109 and you know front brake yeah it's too much so this one here so horrific you, flat track crash this go, is go, my buddy like briar nah go down one. Oh, this is briar yeah this is last round in yeah. last year battling for the championship and he was winning this race and he would have won the championship so like watch oh. this so and then watch this oh my god whoa bro that's that's sammy halbert but yeah Briar. What the fuck? Briar was like, he would have, you know, if he won that race, he would have won a championship. So. No. Yeah, like, and he, I don't know how long he had left, but yeah. Are you watching that? Yeah. <laughs> Go back. Holy. F- Dude. But yeah, so Briar won the championship in 1920 and then was going for it again in. Oh, we're going for it. Okay. Slow-mo. And this, yeah, if he won this race, he would have won it. Dude. What so what bikes are they? They're the twins. Okay. They're like purpose built flat track bikes. Those so things, that's the next step up for you. For sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're like they're big heavy bikes. So what are the injuries that these guys got? Sammy had a broken foot. Briar he uh he was pretty knocked up. Um he was you know, he didn't break anything fortunately, but Sammy, yeah, he like broke his I think his ankle like pretty badly and then like his uh he smashed his face up a little bit, but that I've never seen a crash that bad. Yeah, that's... That is so, so gnarly. I can't believe I've never seen this. Yeah. Bro, that is worst case scenario. And like, because like, we have airbag suits, like manager band oh, stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you run Alpine Stars? Yeah, I'm sponsored. Dude, yeah. how good are those, yeah, those airbags? Legit. Insane. And so, but like, it's, it's, uh, it's very underrated because like, like you watch some of these crashes, like yeah, that let's one play there. that one. These yeah. are these are old school these ones. Um, but so the, so TT, the twins. That's like old yeah, school. Yeah, but like that we don't slide like road racing. We just like because it's dirt. We just and we're doing so fast. We just grab on yeah, the dirt. So yeah. so you just like, <sighs> yeah 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 yeah. But like yeah, there's like this takes a bit. But just turn the volume down on the bo- red box, on three. But so like, this is a mile, a spring for mile. So, like, these guys are flying. It doesn't look like it, and they're on, like, purpose-built bikes. But, like, watching them sometimes just bite in. Oh. And then, like, he hay bales. Like, yeah, he got it out pretty good, that one. But it's just, it's, uh, it some tr- like, now we have air fences, obviously, but back in the day, mate, hay bales. Yeah. Concrete walls, gnarly stuff. So, would would this, like, oh. But there is some. Just Griff. Would the... Would the TT stuff be like maybe the oldest form of racing in no, Ameri- this, America? The this stuff is, but like that, yeah, that's what I mean. Like this style of this like is flat that's track. a half mile. Ah, uh, okay, so that's, yeah. I still we still race on like this stuff, but like, um, yeah, like we have some big crashes. Uh, it, very you know very fortunate. There's not many, which is great, but yeah. they can be bad, which is no good at all. Like watch this guy rear wheel grabs oh. and then just and see like we don't we don't really yeah dude you you're, nah nah go this is gnarly so, so this is what would worry me <laughs> about doing this shit so this is another mile but like you watch when he like he it's like a this is like how like weird flat track is it's a clay track so it, the dirt doesn't move too much pretty sticky but his w- rear wheel just fully bites in on this little greater lip boom yeah man and then his front wheel just buckles dude that is so 
gnarly. Yeah, and just hay bales. But yeah, so like this is this is these are old old. But yeah, like, yeah. But like yeah, just watch it. Just crabs a little bit, and then yeah, just. Oh my god, bro. Yeah. And there's a lot of weight. Like that's a those bikes are that, heavy. That's a big big yeah. motorcycle. They're like a Harley V twin. Yeah, yeah. So what's the brands that are in twins? Yeah, we have Harley, and then like these are just slide outs mainly. But yeah, um, but like we have Harley, Indian. Is Triumph in there? Uh, no, they do like someone people have them, but they don't really like. Yeah, uh, they're not fully in like every round, but they have yeah Harley, Indian, Yamaha. Um, what Yamahas do they ride? MT07, MT I think it is, or okay. FC07 or something. Yeah. Um, and then we have KTM now. Yeah. The 8, 890, which is like oh, okay. unreal. Like James Raspoli wrote it this year. and Show us a picture of that. Where would that be? Uh, Instagram, just go Wally Brown Racing. That bike is sick. It looks good. Yeah, okay. So that's probably like what you'll graduate to. You Hopefully when one you, day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. But one right now, I'm really happy with where I'm at. So I don't know. Do, do KTM do a factory? No, like, they support this, for this team. Like okay. go to that top pick. Oh yeah, yeah, go to that top one. That's that's gangster, dude. Yeah, so that bike's pretty sick. Holy shit, that's super dope. Wow, that's Raspoli. Yeah, still she fell off. <laughs> what's that? He still she fell off in that photo. Oh yeah, dude, that thing is a beast. So what's that? A uh, uh, 890, 890 motor yeah wow and is that what custom, chassis is that in custom swing arm uh, subframe and then I'm pretty sure that's standard frame that looks like a standard motocross frame yeah I think with different front end obviously but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so but yeah well, damn that looks like a bit of a project bike build right there oh yeah they take like some of these guys bikes are just like they take a like they take a good minute to get prepped and then like you can't just like you can't just build one and then go like win like yeah, it's, yeah. there's so much setup in flat track you gotta think there's only two corners yeah and it's all about getting the power to the ground yeah so um yeah it's like super super different for sure but yeah no so yeah okay. you guys have some gnarly crashes bro yeah that is fucking hectic yeah, so the airbag is. say does that save you a bunch yeah it it does you know like as much as it gonna be well what you'd yeah. rather have it than not oh, 100% yeah and like yeah, like it's 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 good that safety gear is getting better and better for sure with you know the speeds and and whatnot. But um, yeah, it's just sometimes they're just so big, you know. You could yeah. have the best of the best of the best, yeah. and you know whatever. Yeah, stuff yeah. Happens. The um the when you've got a like I've got one of those um suits with the airbag in it. Yeah. For when I do road racing stuff, and like it's to me like a helmet. I mean, yeah. I know that some yeah. of the some of the other boys, like the MotoGP boys, they don't really care. Like, I think that they're they're obviously on a different level, especially with crashing. Like, I've 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 only ever crashed on I've crashed on the road, mm. like riding on the road, never on at a track day. Yeah, I've crashed in like mini bikes, like a Varleys and shit. Mm-hmm. But um, that's still something that's extremely scary. Oh, so yeah. for me to, if I had the choice of having a Tech Air or not bro yeah. it, literally every time like you're just yeah. never gonna catch me not no. not wearing that shit yeah now like once you get comfortable with them and whatnot you know that makes the suit a bit heavier yeah but i wouldn't change it yeah you know like it's uh it's just it's honestly like peace of mind as well yeah knowing that you got some a little bit more yeah um which is good for sure and it's just around your organs man and yeah your, and just, your spine as well you know, you know like, like shoulders to down to your waist so yeah. your whole body is covered with it yeah um and it's called the a stars tech air suit yeah yeah if people haven't seen them like I, maybe see if there's like a demo of, on the like on the yeah just put like alpine stars tech air demo because people might not know that this is a thing they're doing it um so chucky had it in dakar like yeah, all the Dakar guys. Yeah, had I didn't it this realize year. that until like this year. I think yeah. I was actually listening to yeah, Sanders' yeah, podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he had like the highest G or something. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It's so I uh, go yeah go to like that one. This is the go, yeah or demonstration no, top one. No, no, sorry. Up this this one here. Yeah. Oh, go actually go back go back. Sorry, Griff. That top one is good. Like you can see it. The this inflates before. So like it can, so I don't know how they do it or like what goes on with it, but it can sense when you're about to crash. Mm. <clears throat> Does yours go off before you hit the ground? Like every time? Uh, yeah, it's both. Yeah, it has done. 
So this dude, yeah. So it's got these like sensors inside it. And when it detects like something that wouldn't be like normal, look at that. Before his head has even gone past that, I'd say he'd be pretty fucked with the way he just, <laughs> with the way he just <laughs> hey, can we put him on the too, head first into that. But yeah, you could literally see how it goes up before they even go like over the bars. I mean, fuck, just don't do that though, like ever. Yeah, let's not do that. But yeah, especially like you can get, so that's a road, just a road bike vest or like jacket. So that's the one that I've got. his wrist to be a bit sore too, you see that? Yeah, I'd, I think he's not well. <laughs> this. That's probably like the worst fucking case where he just like <laughs> face planted into the fucking door column. Uh, but yeah, so you can get, you can actually get a, like a, just a normal road every yeah. day. And I've got one of those things as well. That's sick, yeah. But yeah, so they're doing them for, I think for Dakar and desert riding and all, mm. and all that sort and of stuff. And those guys knew they're going fast. Oh, bro. Just the peace of mind to mm-hmm. know that you be like wrapped up to because that motorcycles are just so gnarly like For when sure. you think about how easy it is to die on a motorcycle yeah. it's actually fucking scary that we all do it so much yeah for sure and you guys have had some people die on the flight track yeah like sadly this year we lost you know ryan vance um that was tough you know i'd spent a lot of time with him and and whatnot he was really good friends with a lot of my friends and and you know i it's one of those things where like, I, we actually hung out way more than, you know, every time I'd go to PA to motocross, he was there. Yeah. And then um, that one really hurt because he had three generations in his family of racers, flat trackers. Oh, wow. And yeah, that, that was that was super hard. You know, Ryan passing, um, that was this year. And, and how'd that happen in a race? Yeah, in a race. Yeah. At one of the tracks in the national series. So that was, yeah, terrible. And then, you know, we've had a f- few others, obviously, in, you know, the past five six years it's been pretty pretty rough but is there anything that you think that they could do to make it safer or it's just literally i think they some, do everything they can sometimes the walls um like because we race at horse tracks yeah on the big miles and stuff and you know sprint car tracks and stuff so like almost it's it's like it's so hard to like they're doing the best they can yeah but like maybe some like you know wood along like the you know like what's it called like you know the like the guardrail sort yeah, of things yeah yeah oh like the horse tracks and yeah stuff. yeah like the yeah. railings and the horse tracks like sometimes like wood along them would be a bit more you know like help you with the mind but they do the best they can sometimes yeah, yeah so yeah yeah it's just the game yeah the game that you freak play. accidents yeah and was when ryan that crash was it like a bit of a freak accident type of yeah, thing yeah yeah it was yeah super sad it's just it's so so sad to see you know one of your mates and then a fellow racer even like it's just yeah it's tough for sure he was racing he actually was racing an 890 tw- twin to yeah. ktm yeah him and his dad built so <clears throat> that one was that one hit the hit everyone really tough how did you go racing after that like is it is it in we actually your, raced that night is it in your head yeah a little bit but you know once yeah, you're a racer you know once the lights go green it's, yeah but yeah no that one yeah that was tough yeah i remember i mean i've said it before on here but yeah when andrew McFarlane yeah. passed away like fuck it cooked me eh? like I yeah. just I was just so scared of the bike just for sure you know knowing kind of what what can happen but <clears> it's yeah like, but it's something I look at it like, to face you know I look at it like you can die driving I could have dro- died driving here to the podcast like yeah and you know if it was to ever happen I'd I'd, I'd choose a motorbike yeah like it's what I'd love doing so yeah it, it sucks to say that it's hard to say that whatever you know but it's the truth yeah so, yeah and i think it's the it's the it's the move you yeah because you're right like yeah and i mean statistically you got a better chance of dying in a car crash yeah they say know? that like more people well, more people do every, For every sure, obviously yeah. less people do it than ride yeah motorbikes but you know you kind of you add it up and you're still you know you're still up yeah exactly yeah. but i mean yeah and it's like the the thing that you spent your whole life doing and the, you got to think too like you know while while you're alive like the time you spent with your family and the, you for know, sure like yeah. that time you like just tri- cruise around america with dad in the rv it was yeah, awesome yeah what was your favorite place to drive through when you did that trip like what state just fully stands out it would have to be it's like a boring drive but going from anywhere like where normal rounds are because we're on the east coast we have like three yeah. rounds in the west but um going from like 
Illinois or anywhere on the East Coast or like Midwest, East, whatever, to California. Yeah. Like it's a boring drive because there's nothing. But you see so much like different terrain and landscape. Um, that's It's cool to see in all the mountains and stuff. But Which state for the mountains? Are you, are you uh, like going? when you just get into New York. Uh, sorry, when you just get into Cali and then like, you yeah, know, like yeah. Arizona and stuff. Yeah. But some of the, the best drive I've ever done is scary at the time. But we went from sacramento california back to the west coast and i forget where it was exactly i was 16 but we went over this like range and it was summertime midsummer and it was snowing on top of this mountain like that's yeah, how high yeah, up we yeah, were yeah. like it was snowing and i was i remember i was like freaking out because everyone's getting chains on their bit like their tires yeah yeah dad's like fuck the chains we don't need them <laughs> <We're> <laughs> going down this RV. hill. he's holding the coffee and he's just going down the hill in this shitty rv i'm like oh fuck Dude, so when we went to we went to Colorado for Christmas one year when I was living over there. That's where I might have been. I might have been in Colorado. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not too sure, but yeah, pro- yeah it could have been. Yeah. Could have been over Wyoming around there somewhere. I yeah, know. yeah. So yeah, we we were at Breckenridge and we had like this Chevy Tahoe that we'd rented. We had like the whole family in there, <laughs> and same deal. Dad's like, nah, fucking not doing change around the <laughs> yeah. town. And then uh, he like, because when you're driving on the opposite side of the road, yeah. like you normally look the opposite yep. way for the Everything. so he's going like that and then realise oh fuck I'd the, I've got to look the other way so he's like slam the brakes on the fucking <laughs> right. tire he's just going <laughs> and just like going into someone's front yard and just hit like this massive snowbank and we couldn't get the fucking thing out eh? <laughs> that's tight oh we just grilled him for it too eh? for the entire rest of the trip it's uh it's actually like so scary like driving come back from a country to another country like everyone would understand but like I got so used to driving in America. Now I come back over here, you like get up to a set of lights and like question yourself. You're like, fuck. <laughs> which, yeah. way, which way do I go? Well, dude, I, I was in, I was just in Dubai and they right, they drive on the, the American side. Oh, do they? Yeah. And dude, I was walking and just crossed the yeah, road. Yeah, even walking Almost the road. Almost got fucking, coll- I had my AirPods in yeah. and I looked and I was like, <laughs> like face close to dude almost got gypsy tails done <laughs> it was almost <laughs> over boys oh, but nice. yeah like even dry like driving you've got to be so uh walking sorry yeah, like anything, anytime you're yeah. around the road like you need to be paying 100%. bulk attention even in america too you gotta be like you just gotta like look at everything because you know there's like bad areas and stuff even driving like that's another thing that goes super unnoticed like because you know in australia like the bad and good areas like, you know, you're not going to get a, you know, motel at Logan City for the night. Yeah. Um, but you don't know that in America. So, you're like, you'll just pull yeah, you up. You don't know what's bad, what's good. You don't know good. what's bad or good, especially when you're driving through the night to each race. You know, you're pushing the clock. You know, like, sometimes me and Dad would go from state to state and drive, like, 30 hours nonstop. Yeah. And get to a race, blah, blah, whatever. But you don't know the bad areas. So, like, that's the same with that cracker getting in the RV. We had no idea it was a bad, bad area. I looked at a few places and it didn't look too bad bang like it's that easy you be yeah careful. yeah oh dude yeah america is no joke when it comes to that like no joke i was we were out in oakland after o- oakland supercross one year it was that's sketchy too bro, bad. it was so sketchy so we were we were out kind of too late i had like a chick that i was trying to hook up with from mm. there and then there was it was mark he was actually the suspension dude for factory ktm at the time oh nice and we we're out and uh I went to get into a cab home and I was like, oh, I've only got a card. And he's like, nah, I only take cash. So then I had to go to this ATM and this like fucking huge black dude in a trench coat like fully bailed me up, like trying to get my... He wasn't trying to get my cash from there. He was trying to make me go into an alleyway to another ATM that was working better. And I was like, nah, man, I think this one's good. Like, I'll just get my cash. He's like, nah, bro, I'm really trying to look after you. Just left the cash and ran off. Oh, dude. So I grabbed the cash and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. And uh, anyway, luckily the chick that I was with kind of like read the whole situation and she like bolted out of the out of the little convenience store it was like atm was on the side of this yeah. like seven you know, or whatever <laughs> yeah and i was just like fuck and she's just bolted she was like come on let's go and like grabbed me and like i just fucking legged it out. oh mate like legged it behind us and really yeah we had like the cab door was already open because i'd like just got out of this cab just fucking chuck this shot like pretty much like threw this chick in the fucking in the car and then old mate he was like trying to come after us without 
like running after yeah. us, you know. So, but I was just like, doof, 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 yeah, like it's fuck me, dude. I'm about to get done in Oakland right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we ended up. It's no in. joke. Yeah, fucking oh. And like, yeah, I've seen I've seen some like pretty gnarly. Sh- like you go through just through the. Where's the worst place you've seen? You reckon? Oh, I went through so Atlanta. Like, we're going to Charlotte for the last round last yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. There's some bad plot spots in Atlanta. Yeah, and I was going through Atlanta, and Atlanta traffic, if you know, if you've been to America, you know, it's like the worst. Yeah, yeah. And I covered my phone, like GPS, like saved 10 minutes, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> bang, <laughs> got off the motorway. And I'm like cruising, and it's like not too bad. It's just pretty like, it's like not the cleanest. It's like pretty shitty, and you're like, oh, it's fine. You know, windows up, lock the doors. Yeah. And, uh, and I get to this spot, and it's a red light. And I'm, it's starting to get pretty bad. And like houses are like like falling down, boarded up, boarded and, up yeah. and like service, like gas stations, the service servos, just like like crackheads all out the front of them. And I'm like, oh, it's getting it's getting pretty bad. Yeah. And I get to this red light, and I'm not kidding you. There's just people just like walking all over the road and like zombie land. It's like everyone's cracked out and like every like every building was like fully boarded and like burnt and you know like it's just like picture like the worst place in australia times it by 10 like yeah. it was like i was for sure like i was one knuckle on the steering wheel i'm like fuck if anyone touched my door i'm flat just out yeah. it, dude. dude i used to just not stop at traffic lights in downtown la it's not a bad idea like we used to we used to go to concerts yeah. in um in downtown like riff raff yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, no, like, all like the bougie dudes yeah. would like be playing down in uh in in downtown and um because there's like some awesome places for sure but then once you're trying to get out of downtown and then onto the freeway yeah like just not stopping at traffic lights and i used to just tell the people that i was in the car with i was yeah. like we're just running every red light and yeah. like, Why not? i was like we're just not stopping we're not man. playing that like, game it's just, it's just too easy yeah. it's too easy to not stop right now yeah and there's no traffic light cameras so, and I was like, if I get pulled over by a cop, I'm down. Yeah. And if they just pull me over and say like, why are you running red light? They're like, I ain't fucking stopping here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, the area? Yeah. Like, well, the, and the, the thing is, the cops aren't really there that much. No. So not. like, realistically, like, you're just better fucking running the red lights. I drove down here and I, like, there was one of those cops that you sit like one kilometer under the speed limit and they're just poking along in the outside lane and everyone's too scared to pass them yeah yeah, yeah so it's just yeah, bottled yeah, up yeah, everywhere yeah. behind them but like in america they don't give a fuck out mate they don't care like nah. i've like gone past cop cars doing you know 10 mile over 12 mile over, you know whatever and they're just like sort of just don't even look twice yeah over here if you're going like someone told me that like if you go like two kilometers over the speed limit now you get a ticket dude i got a fine the other day 64 300 fine so four over four over bro yeah that's i'd be in trouble it's three hundred dollar fine that's a joke dude how many points two points someone as well oh i probably yeah yeah i didn't even look Fuck. but what a dog eh? that's terrible that's just you know what that's called revenue raising yeah that's no that's got nothing to do with safer safety yeah. and for and like you know mick Dillon said this to me the other day it makes a whole lot of sense cars have been getting safer every single year since they've started making them yeah and the speed limits in australia have stayed the same good point there's no adjusting for then they've gone down as well in some spots for sure they have bro well dubai you can do um you can do 20 k's over whatever it says on the sign really yeah yeah that's good and the max the max speed is 120 so you can do 140 before a couple pull you over or before they've got uh, yeah, yeah. cameras on the thing but you can be 20 k's over the limit that's another thing too america no, no speed, speed cameras. cameras yeah bang so you just got i got ways on my phone oh so you can see where the cops are see where the cops are and then you just you know knock it back a little bit but punch it over here there's cameras everywhere like i drove it's three and a half hours yeah i live in gimpy um oh is the farm up that way yeah so oh, i live uh, like tw- 10 20 minutes from mx farm so your old boy just sold out of everything in Brizzy and then went to the farm. Yeah. So he's he sold no nine, oh ten. He went to an outdoor motocross race. He hasn't been another, he hasn't been to an outdoor motocross race or a supercross since oh ten. Yeah, I haven't seen him in yeah. just years. He bro. just he was just you know upfront person retail his whole life. Like he had Whale Motors, which is a car yard, then Wales Kawasaki from ninety eight to oh six, and then KRT. Yeah. Um, so when it was time to finish, he finished like he was just like we had a 106 acre property we had 110 head of cattle 
had a farm, a track and whatever. Um, and then we just, he sold that last year. So now I live like real close to Gympie and we have a uh, like 50 acre block. Yeah. It's all bushland though. So he can just like, he got, got a track on that one too. Yeah. Just, I built a grass track just the other day and just mowed it in. But, um, he's got, um, just like he's six hundred cows now. So he like sold all the cows. Sold six the f- favorite cows. Yeah. Like he'll f- awesome. give them beers and stuff like they're chill. <laughs> um, you can fully just run up to them in the paddock and pat them like yeah. that. Sick. And, uh, and then, yeah, so we have that place now, um, which is good for him and mom because they're like, now they're fully retired. Yeah. Like when they moved to that other place, it was still like work. full-time work. Yeah. When now it's, that it doesn't matter if it's a little like, it's bushland, you know, so, you know, trees, ground, whatever, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and then he's more work on like bikes now. He wants to like, he just built a new shed um, and we've got a bunch of like, we've got sick 500s, you know, got Reggie's 500. Yeah, that's an AMX. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's ours. And then, we have uh, Andrew McFarlane's um, KX500 250 frame. They race the designations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a flat track 500s. So we got 125s. So we got all this other like cool old bikes. Naked. So he's just gonna tinker. He's gonna just build stuff and you know just yeah help. I don't know just cruise around the farm. Be retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we have a house at Noosa as well. So yeah, I go there a fair bit and you know right now all the families there obviously yeah. for Christmas and uh, and then yeah so it's it's cool uh he gets to just like chill now like because yeah. the, the old farm was full full on that's like, a lot of work yeah eh? how big was it 100 and- 160 acres yeah um 110 head of cattle yeah but like it's just like weed spraying fences like it's yeah it doesn't sound like much but it's a lot oh dude slashing like it's, yeah 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 it's a big job so. yeah uh with this new place he you know he just mows the, the house block and that's it and then the rest is the rest you know the cows can just cruise around now and yeah, it's pretty sweet. So it's so sick seeing him do what he did, and like, because that's sort of the dream, you know. Like, not mm-hmm. a lot of people actually get to retire in that yeah. in that way. Like, just For sure. he fully just did everything his own his own way. Like, did yeah. his businesses, killed it, got out of it when he wanted to get out of it, then stayed out of it and didn't you know feel yeah. any like he had to come back. Had nothing to prove. Like, For sure. Yeah. So many times in racing, you can get it caught Tied back in, in that yeah. like kind of just keep wanting to win keep chasing it you know the yeah. team gets smaller and smaller and you end up burning heaps of your own cash exactly so but he, yeah. yeah he just like fully dipped out and then Dip. did another thing and then now he's kind of got his deal and yeah. doesn't have to do anything so like yeah he, he when that sold the race team he sort of went full on just like helping me and uh and then yeah we just as i said went over to america he was with me for uh four years in america and and then now yeah i've been on my own in america now for three years so yeah it forces you to grow up quick, eh? When you when you're 100%. On your own over there. when he left, I didn't know how to wash dishes. I was just like a kid, just like cruising around. He did everything, wash, made me food, everything. He left, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> laundromats by myself, just sitting there waiting. And yeah, like yeah, it just yeah. totally changed the whole aspect of it. That's cool though, eh? Like, yeah. did, did you enjoy the process of like kind of learning how to actually be an adult? For sure. Like at first, it was just like it's it's underrated. Yeah. I actually wish if I could go back in time. I actually wish I could take a bit more pride in that shit and a bit more like actually have a crack a bit more because yeah. I always just did the fucking bare minimum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bought new clothes <laughs> yeah. when I like yeah. whatever shit was too He's dirty. like, oh, yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out, out you go. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely didn't, re- especially in an RV too because like you can't have like a hundred t-shirts. Like bro, it's tiny. Yeah. Um, so you have your certain clothes you have your good ones in the cupboard then your bad ones and as soon as the bad ones we get too bad and they're at the window you know? yeah yeah so but no it was super cool um learning the whole process but as i said mate i was so lucky to have like good friends that like if you know on the road you know sometimes i'd do 30 hour trips by myself in the rv a trailer like tires blowing out you gotta go to the store get them fixed i'm fully by myself and uh like no gun nothing and like in america everyone has a gun yeah yeah So like yeah. i had a taser that was my right hand man just taser <laughs> always in the door um but yeah so did that but as i said the friends that i've i've met and uh and got now and and ha- how they helped me out it wouldn't have been possible at all you yeah. know like i could you know to list that's just you know so long so but yeah yeah that's one thing about americans that uh, i'll say is well for sure is that they are very generous people like they just do will if you know the right people they'll literally give you the shirt off their back 100 percent. and like i i got some really really bad news uh 
two days ago. My uh, Briar and Bronson's mum, she sadly passed. Oh, no. So that was super hard because Barry and Lisa, um, she like they did so much for me. Yeah. Barry in 2020 went to every round with me and uh, worked on my bikes. Like, so he, I drove my motorhome, him and Lisa and their two dogs drove, like they had their own RV, but yeah, every round they were there helping me and, you know, Lisa would always cook me food and I stayed at their house like three months ago, I was at their house, you know, when I, before I left and yeah, it's just. Yeah, and was it unexpected? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Fuck, that's so heavy, dude. Mm. Yeah, because you really can't do it without those people, can you? Like, there's no. such a... I mean, yeah, even for me, like, I've still got people that I'll talk to, like, pretty much daily. I haven't been there in, like, six years. Yeah. You know, just people that... <clears throat> I would have been completely fucked, like, yeah. just done. Like, I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have survived over there the way that I did without, you know. And I'm, like, kind of glad I didn't even have to go through a lot of that shit alone. For you know? sure. Because they, like, picked up such a slack of like close family close mm-hmm. friends like giving you that kind of like support and stuff yeah and and like to this day i live with a family and like they do like they've helped me out so much like matt my, my best mate i met him racing he doesn't race anymore and then his mom and his stepdad uh, i live at their house through the year um and then yeah so like they he just like i don't pay any rent like it's just it's home over there like yeah. i have um, like my van's there um they they fully got rid of a whole side of their shed just for me so for my practice bikes and tools and whatnot you know i got my own little setup that's so sick so yeah. whereabouts is that uh like 20 minutes away from st louis oh okay yeah so like right in illinois um it's like it's a small town uh, st jacob um yeah. it's right near edwardsville and yeah 20 minutes from st louis which is like perfect for me because with the races that are you know too far the airport's right there yeah so big airport too so everything's pretty uh and it, everything you need is in st louis yeah yeah so it yeah. per- works out perfect so where's the team based uh it's the main like so like right now everything's full at ktm yeah before so we get everything sorted you know in like sorted out and ready to go in ktm um and then once the season happens they go to the uh, ohio yeah um, at a place called Greenville, tiny town, and he, my mechanic lives. Oh, the team mechanic lives there, and he does you know mine and Cody's bikes from his uh, shop at his house. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's cool. got a pretty nice shop, so yeah, that's pretty sweet. So, yeah. how did the factory KTM thing come about? So we were sort of talking before that you did like that privateer season. Yeah. So what were your what were your results like in the first couple years pro like yeah. how would you describe like the lead up to getting the ktm gig first year professional was shit house. really yeah i got 13th overall i got rookie of the year i did battle for a couple of podiums but like it was like nothing i was so inconsistent like it wasn't even funny and what why was that you reckon like just lack of now, knowledge yeah okay. lack of knowledge every, knowledge is everything so like what didn't you know like everything <laughs> yeah like some suspension like and i was super like reggie built my suspension um my first ever said american suspension and like no one else even wanted to do it like yeah and reggie just went yeah i'll do it killed it i used the same suspension for three years reggie did it and then we got an american set done and that made it sort of closer to how i like and that uh, for my first year professional but the first year was just all over the place like trailer was like we, we got a good trailer we had a good trailer the last next two years but like it was a shitty trailer broke my collarbone missed a few rounds like it was sort of all over the show yeah, um, yeah. nothing was really like like you didn't we went to probably two races where it was like yeah bikes are locked in ready to go yeah yeah, like, yeah. we're ready bikes yeah. ready we're here on time like i'd go to the track and we'd still be doing work on them and stuff and then the next year in 19 i had that team start of the year i started out good like i got fifth at daytona yeah um against like 80 people and uh that was super cool because it was like second year and, and whatnot and so it was it was great and then what bikes was that on cowies so yeah. i rode cow my whole life until yeah uh 21 and uh and then yeah so that happened and uh <clears throat> and then it's, as i said this the seven rounds and then it sort of went away the team and i so then me and dad i bought my own bike um 
a 19 Cowie. So then he had one from the year before. Yeah. And we went out and did it ourselves again. And uh, Did the results get better when you were doing it on your own? Uh, not really. They're up and down. Like, as I said, still inconsistent. Like, I I, I got, I think, like, three sevenths in a row. <laughs> yeah, like, right. It was just like, it was, that was like, just average. You know, that's, that's what that year was, average. And a ninth in the championship. Got a podium. Um, my first podium. And then it was just, yeah, like I had such good speed sometimes in heat races and stuff, and I'd just fall of shit in the main events. Like, I'd just fall apart. And what was that, like mentally, you reckon? Ah, uh, mentally, and then I think I used to just, like, not, you got to be so, like, flat track in America is, like, so mental. Yeah. And I think, like, it's like any racing, really. But, like, I wasn't mentally strong. Like, I was just like, eh, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then when Dad left in 2020 at the start of the year, made me realize, like, and he said, as, as I t- said before, he said, this is the last year that we're, you know, going to fund it. And so I was like, I really need to just go out there and just like, it sort of like made me like work. It was like, cause I didn't do shit in 18, 19. I sort of just had to, like, I was just like cruising around with dad yeah. and, uh, you know, eating pies, whatever. But then it really just like, I was a kid. And then, and then when he left, it was sort of like, all right, now you have to really like single swim. Like, yeah. this is it. Do you want to work for the rest of your life? As, with, as a carpenter or something you know um and and i got i won the season opener um in 2020 doing my own thing that's sick yeah that must have been a good feeling yeah against factory teams everything rolled up me my best mate and uh barry um we went out there and we won it and then the next night the bike broke <laughs> <laughs> so i had to ride my other bike and then i had ended up that year with a win five podiums second in the championship but all year, I was so worried about not getting a ride. I yeah. was like hassling every team. I was like, hey, what about me? And they're like, nah, I can't do anything for you. But the one I've always like, Rebel KTM, like I've always wanted a Rebel helmet. Yeah. And I got to Chris Fillmore. Uh, you've probably heard the name. Yeah, yeah. Like legend. Uh, he goes, he was a, he's a team manager. And he's like, oh, okay. he's like, uh, nah, sorry, I can't do anything. Like it was like every like two rounds I'd ask him, hey man, can we do something? No, nah, I can't do anything. I was like, all right. And uh, and then at the last round, I went second and third because every round was a double header, trying yep. to make up the weekend because because uh, of COVID. Because of COVID. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the last two rounds, I got second and third, and like, I was like in reaching distance of winning both of them, and uh, I remember I was walking back to my picks. I was pissed. I wanted to win the last race, and I won one. I wanted to win the. I wanted to win at least one more, and I'm walking back to my pit, and film was like, oi, and I'm like. What's up? And he's like, uh, I'll, uh, he goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm probably just going to unpack the RV. i got to sell it and head home in two weeks. And he's like, what are you doing next weekend? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> and he's like, how about you come to Cali and ride the bike? Fuck. And I was like, yup. So I remember that night, sat in the RV and I called my pump, mom and dad and I'm like all pumped. And then booked a flight, you know, two days later. So, like, hurried back to Pennsylvania. That's where I unloaded everything. Like, got rid of everything out of the RV, sorted it all, and uh, and then yeah, just flew to Cali. And I was hanging with my dad's mate, and he's a stunt worker. In, oh yeah, in uh, LA, and uh, he's like, "All right, let's go do some supermoto." And I put it on my Instagram story that I was in California, and uh, another team reached out to me. They're like, "Hey, do you want to come ride our bikes?" Really? And I was like, "Yeah." And so he's like, "What are you doing Tuesday?" And I'm like, "Can't do it Tuesday. I'm with my friends and you know, friends and close people." But I was testing the KTM. Yeah, yeah. And KTM were like, "You cannot tell anyone. Like, you cannot tell yeah, anyone." Yeah. And so, like, I won't promise. So I'm wearing Robbie Madison's leathers. Actually, I forgot my leathers, so I yeah left them or some. So I'm in Madison's leathers, and uh, I ride the KTM on the first day. And the next day, I go back and ride the Yamaha Twin. Oh yeah. And so the TT bike? The no, no, like the big bike. Like the, the, oh, like yeah, the yeah, twins. yeah, the twin. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, so yep. I ride that. And they race them on every circuit too. Yeah, okay. And what so was that like? It was pretty gnarly. Like they were fast. Yeah. Was that the first time you'd rode one of those? Uh, no, second time. Yeah. But I never rode one on a, like a smaller track. I only rode one of the miles. Yeah. And so film was like growing me all day. No photos, can't tell anyone, nothing. Yeah. And... uh I remember it on the, like, you know, the, they have the waivers, like, sign your life away. I signed it and it had the date on it. And the next day I roll up there. They're like, what have you been up to? I'm like, oh, nothing. Just hanging with friends and family. And the track owner comes up and goes, wow, you're a bit of a bike slut, aren't you? Oh, no. And I'm like, oh. 
he's like, Wait, what is he talking about? And I'm like, Oh, nothing. Don't worry about it. And he goes to do the sign on thing, and because everyone has to sign it on, and the the team guy comes back and he's like, Were you here yesterday? And I'm like, No. Nah. And he's like, it Says on the thing the date. And I'm, oh. like, and I'm like, Oh, I'm like yeah, I was riding yesterday. And so then it was kind of weird, but yeah, I rode that bike then the next day, and then I remember because then I flew back like two days after that. And I was in quarantine. Worst two weeks of my life. So you flew back to Oz after yeah. that? Yeah, right. And was stuck in a hotel room. So, oh, so you had to do the hotel quarantine? Yeah, it's worse. Oh, what a crazy era that it's was. It's actually like mind-blown thinking back at it. I, dude, I know. Like traveling, um, Just I just got back last week and just chilling in an yeah. airport normally. Yeah, like, it's what, like, the, what were we up to? One year, it's just like freak out and then now it's just like nothing. Yeah. Dude, anyway, sorry. So, worst two weeks of your life. Yeah, and so I remember Phil was like, you know, like, we don't know because at the time Shana Texter was riding and, uh, like, she's an animal. Like, yeah. female, she wins races. Excuse me. And uh, he goes, you know, like, we've got her and we don't know if we can do a second ride or whatever. And I was like, all right, all good. And there's a Suzuki team that I was talking to and film and, you know, KTM. And I remember I was like in like the mix of all this and I was like, hey, uh, the Suzuki team's like, hey, we need you to know, we need to know if you're in or you're out on this date. And film was like, ah, oh, I still haven't got word yet. So like I was going back and forth. And I remember it came down to like 10 minutes, like Suzuki, or like uh, Wally Brown that had the KTM now. They yep. used to be Suzuki. Ah, yeah. And so they were like talking, like they're like, hey, this day. And then I'm like, can I do one more day? And they're like, yeah. And then I'm like, can I do one more day? And they're like, yeah. But then they're like, hey, you have 3 p.m. till this time because we're bringing a kid down to ride our bikes. I'm like, all right. So I remember Fillmore calls me at like 2.30 that day. He's like, hey, you got the ride. And I was like, I was so stoked in quarantine. Couldn't tell anyone, couldn't do anything. I remember I'm like, hey, sorry, guys, I got the KTM. And they were like, super cool. Wally's a great guy. Uh, he's like works at um, Joe Gibbs Racing in NASCAR. Oh, sick, yeah. And... Uh, and he was like no it's all good because yeah you never want to like burn no, that, no, no. burn that bridge yeah eh? exactly but yeah got the ktm deal uh signed a one-year deal and then uh and then yeah did. and that was like a paid deal yep yeah yep. um not much by any means but that's all like, yeah yeah you get but i have paid. you know bonus pretty good bonuses yeah um and then yeah so i did did well you know i won five races that year um and got a couple podiums and uh finished the year second in points by six points i oh, sorry second yeah by six points but a few rulings through that year kind of like screwed me a little bit but oh, hey, really? it's racing is what it is but yeah. um yeah got second and then uh that was 21 and then this year came back and i played in the first four races and then uh the f- sorry i podiumed the first three out of four races and then broke my leg yeah missed missed a few so it cost me and ended up fifth this year won a race and didn't really i struggled a little bit this year but it's been it's been good i've appreciated it i appreciate it way more than what i think some others do because we did it so tough you know coming yeah, from oz yeah. living with the old boy in the rv and and yeah it really changed the way i look at it and, and i appreciate so much more what the team does for me you know yeah like the just support showing that up, you've got yeah just showing up to the racetrack and i have to worry about the bikes like you're on the line when you do when you're doing it yourself like oh shit did i tighten the rear wheel like yeah yeah, like, yeah. i don't have to worry about any of that like yeah i have a great team behind me and they yeah they're phenomenal so that, that's suspension awesome. guys and stuff yeah so it's sweet and so you did the first year and then they signed you did they sign you to like a multi-year deal after oh that? yeah so so um halfway through 21 they signed me for a two-year extension so sick i got you know more money more of all that but um i got signed for 22 and 23 so uh, i got this year coming as well on the contract and hopefully you know keep going yeah yeah that's so cool man to yeah. you know to that full journey from Oz and then to you know be a privateer with your dad and then to just be completely by yeah by yourself and then to kind of get picked up by the the biggest team like for sure it's sweet it must so like, be crazy yes it's pretty crazy and then like so start of the year like I'll head over January 13th and uh, we'll head to Florida and I'll stay at James Raspoli's house and we'll just you know you know grind for three months and then the season starts March 15th so it's pretty sweet you know you get to you get to see you know more of the country whatever you know hang yeah. out more friends is it's sweet can you bring up the schedule griff just i'd awesome. like to see the races because it'd be cool to this is last year they haven't they, oh they haven't put out the, yeah they haven't put it out yet but if you go i got a photo on my phone 
yeah, like yeah, calendar. Yeah, go the go that top one. Party person, I think so. See if there are events, maybe go at the top there, up the top, and then left, 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 uh, down a bit, go across. Yeah, uh, to, I'll go to twenty twenty two. So how long is like so you got eighteen races you said yeah so eighteen rounds so it starts tenth of March around there and then it'll go to you know uh, October I think this year went to yeah so yeah it's a long year it's cool though like because the like yeah Illinois um, California yeah, Washington Calexpo, yeah Rapid City South Dakota so this year we get to race at the the chip again which is sick what where's that uh, the chip is at um, you never heard of the the, uh, the stages bike week yeah 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 Yeah. yeah. so we race oh, in between all the bars yeah so the TT and they're like like literally the fans can reach out and touch your bars and we're going through like as we're going through the bars it's sick that's awesome dude yeah yeah so what's the what's the racing that I guess or like the format that you guys do that suits you the best suits me um like what what have you got the most <clears throat> wins or podiums at oh uh half miles yeah um and is that more because it's the closest to the aussie stuff you reckon closest size um but totally different surfaces like yeah oz is all loose yeah and if it's not loose it's oil yeah we're over there we race on tracks that are just like like red clay slick like it's so hard to describe how slick it actually is like it's like you gotta be careful like we gotta ride rear brake oh, control yeah. wheel spin you know like but we don't have like motor gp like electronics and all that fancy you know whatever so do you have any traction control oh no nah, just what the ktm comes with standard and it, stuff. do you use it or i use it yeah yeah okay it yeah. makes a difference for me yeah yeah just slows the off the initial th- throttle pull yeah yeah um but yeah so um yeah like it's just real slick and whatnot but i don't know being a taller guy i think it helps on the slick tracks because i can get my body weight around more on the bike yeah but then like on the miles it's tougher because we're trying to get low and we're trying we're going to try and draft and stuff and being tall sucks for that yeah and like even though i'm like 70 kilos um at six foot four i got a huge hole but i'm still like heavy yeah yeah like i'm racing people that are like old bill yeah like, right. you, like 15 year old bill like yeah, tiny. yeah 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 um so it's tough you know trying to draft small people when they have a good good bike yeah and right so but yeah no so so the bikes are you're just topped out max speed oh basically. yeah lit, like just wide open that's insane yeah so like sometimes we'll have a pack of like 14 like drafting each other like spread out and like we'll yeah it's pretty gnarly what's a good highlights let's watch like a is there anything yeah that'd be something um like it's just so tough because like, they just have like the full sessions on there do, but so the do they is like the video package and stuff like good what they do like post event uh we have some pretty oh, good KB, clips. shout out yeah <laughs> Kristen. uh that'd be that's just a full weekend so that's sh- like yeah uh just play it and we'll just fast forward it through a little bit just don't run the audio so like just go to try and go to like the main which or one's something. this one this is the start of the year oh this is the start of the year this track so this track here is brutal like it was super wet and they rushed on the track so let's go to the one you're in oh so yeah I'm you're second. second yeah so this was the first race of the year and it was just like brutal like it was so rough and sl- like it was just if they show like you'll see some moments on this one but this one's more spread out it's a half mile so where's this race uh, this is at Volusia, Florida like yep, 20 minutes yep. from Daytona yep sick um, but yeah, as I said, we're flat out here. I'll put the sound on actually, Griff. Let's. I want to hear these bikes just go. So you're just fifth gear here. Turn down tiny bit. No, nah, we'll go fourth. So like fourth for us is just like stronger gear. Yeah. Okay. Like watch this. Like, like sometimes it's pretty good race, oh, but it's dude. rough. Like, the bumps are pretty small. Like they're way small compared to motocross. The speed that you go. Speed on. and they're square edge. Like yeah. they are so like, you hit them and like it's just like yeah it just grabs your bars and especially with that bigger front tire too for sure yeah once it gets moving it gets yeah. moving yeah there's just so much more weight and inertia eh? yeah so what's the i guess like what's the average like technique i guess like how would you describe like what you've got to do so just, like see just, this guy just he, mute it again Griffin. this guy here at 79 dalton he's got a really good style um 
you want to get he's pretty tall too like me yeah so like your left leg ideally you want to have it behind the bars yeah which is like totally different to what motocross you want to get that thing straight out in front but like see like you they want their leg behind the bars because taller guys when you throw the bike down the side it'll hit your knee and yeah, like yeah. it won't turn under yeah so like this is my teammate cody he yeah. killed it but he rode really good all year he won the championship but um he's a he looks like a smaller dude compared to you he's like six foot six one. Oh, okay so he's pretty tall too yeah um but yeah like he just destroyed us that this night like he made us look like like idiots um but so yeah you want to get your front your, you your leg and you want to balance like you'll see on the edge off the corner he'll like scoot back a lot yeah um try and get the weight to the rear which can yeah. get traction and uh and then yeah like coming in you want to be way forward to turn like to get the weight on the to front. get the weight on the front and whatnot and then on the exit off off like from middle to exit you want to start scooting back the weight yeah getting the the traction because flat track is all about traction and and so are you spinning the rear wheel most of the time here we were but a lot of tracks like no like you, you want to be wanna wheels be in line because yeah. when you're spinning you get no traction like this here these two uh chase comes down here because these are two rookies and they were just going after it yeah yeah um <laughs> this is the first race and they're both pad- battling for a podium their first year but um yeah like i think actually tyler scott gets into chase but um yeah it's 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 cool like it's every track's different the way you ride like yeah after this i'll show you a video of like a, a good track to watch like cause this one's kind of like and so what's the when you guys lower the suspension like what's the what does that change like so if you had this exact helps same it turn, setup okay yeah. but it's not good in oz because oz is way rougher yeah okay and like we're bouncing off walls and everything yeah so like you need that travel in oz but over here it's we don't go anywhere near a wall and and whatnot so it's not too bad and yeah. for the miles to drafting obviously you want to be smaller and more compact which works but the lot of suspension just helps out honestly yeah just across the board yeah so what's a good track that we should watch so watch uh lima so how do you spell that uh, go search bar and just go l-i-m-a uh go down there's nothing surely there has to be something just, just put in uh no go just put in lima half mile yeah it's super interesting to to watch because it's such like a like an old so school like, this is shana so if you go this is no i go second one down uh, that's sorry third <laughs> um if you go to the main event like you'll see like this is like yeah that looks like a pretty dope track this one indiana baby this one here is pretty uh pretty sick so uh, these are the twins so this is the twins yeah. so like roost and like yes this is the track you want to be sideways at but like this track's just like a cool atmosphere like um the roost and it's just different because we race on clay tracks all year yeah so what's this like more granity kind of this is like decomposed granite yeah 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 but yeah like mate, you see some shapes get pulled here because this turns into oz yeah like right. loose dirt and yeah and gnarly but like see like there's chain link fences and stuff on the outside and like Oof. yeah it's kind of brutal that seems so gnarly <laughs> so what speed are these guys going uh like here they'd be doing yeah 150 here probably 160 yeah oh so we just commentates this as well yeah we just commentates yeah. that's so epic that just makes flat track well we cooler. have we have ralph shaheen now too oh right yeah sick I, yeah so go to your main event in this one then uh, was I racing this year? Oh yeah, I was. This is Cowie days, and I was nowhere to be seen. Go back to I think Twins are normally last, so like now that's the Twins. Go more forward, and you know, like other way. Yeah, go kick on more, like other way. Yeah, that way. Was that that chick? Yeah, it's Shana. She won this race. Wow, against the dudes. Yeah, she's gnarly. Dude, what a gangster. Yeah. So like, these are the four fifties, and oh yeah so this is a track where you're fifth wide open basically well we use fourth everywhere sometimes on the streets okay. we click fifth on the miles but like yeah mainly fourth on the circle tracks because it's a i think it's i don't know why i think it's just a stronger gear yeah yeah yeah, yeah but so yeah. this is 19 when i was doing it myself with dad but that's Shayna leading like, what an animal man yeah that's it she's and dude she's like five like i don't know like she's probably like five two or something but 
she is an animal so who's that there that's Dan Brummer that's like he was the old so this was the first year the KTM came into the series in 2019 yep. okay um but yeah like I don't know it's just different eh? it's cool yeah yeah no it's it's awesome man it's like you know what seems gnarly watching it is that you've got no weight on the inside of the bike so as soon as the bike yeah comes back in there's no no leg yeah. against it because like if you're turning if you're turning left like that on a dirt bike your your foot is still kind of against the side of the For bike sure, so yeah. like you've still got some weight there that's crazy that a, a chick is winning an el- like the elite top of the top yeah. motorsport. For sure. You just don't... There's not really any other motorsport where like that's no. the case. But then like we have the TTs, which is like Sipes. So like if you go Buffalo Chip, that's when the one Sipes wins. And like... And he was right. So is this, this is what Sipes does, right? Yeah, Sipes. Well. Ra- I race Sipes. Like so yeah, last yeah. year, it was actually sick. Uh, let's put Buffalo Chip TT. Um, this is really adding to my YouTube algorithm. I love it. All right, here we go. Sipes on the front. So go to like, uh, like, go back, like, other way. Other way. No, no, like, left, yeah. Go, like, dude, Sipes just smoked us here. Really? Yeah, right here. So this is like the, going through the bars. Like, this is, this is sick because like, we're going through, it's packed. Like, there's people everywhere. Yeah, Sturgis is wild. We eh? have like, no real pit area. Like, it's just like, free for all. And like, like look at the people like it's packed yeah that's an epic general store and bar <laughs> yeah it's, it's like some it's like out of a movie so where are you this was private is yeah, that that's you back yeah, there yeah past some guy that's fell on the ground how's jeff ward too oh sick yeah shout out to the great man yeah and so yeah so the, then the tt is the one where you've got all the like front the, break the corners and yep. the, the front break and stuff like yeah. that so um like Miller would be like incredible at this. Yeah, yeah. Just like right up Miller's alley. Dude, I want to see him do it so bad, eh? Um, but yeah, so like last year at Atlanta TT, I had um Sipes and uh Pastrana as my teammates. Really? Yeah, it was so sick. How cool was that? Yeah, twenty one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Travis is a cool guy too. I mean Sipes is as well. Yeah, like dude, Travis was like I was like, Oh, this guy's gonna be like he's just massive. I'm like, oh he'll be like Too cool. Yeah, he'd be like, oh whatever, flat track. Dude, he was like the coolest guy I ever met. He's like Miller. Like yeah. he's just like, hey, what's up? Like, oh, he's just chill. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing with just music. Group. Um, I think that's the thing with dudes, though. That's what I've always found, anyway. And I find this to be very consistent, just in life in general, is that the guys at the very top, like Ricky Carmichael, Travis sure. Pastrana, Jack Miller, yeah. like that level of dude is always just the nicest, coolest guy for yeah. the most part. Like nine out of 10 guys on that level are just going to be like that. Yeah. It's all the dickheads that are in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then it, and then you go down the very bottom and then it's like the just the average Joes. They're the nicest people in for the sure. world. So yeah. it's like the top are the exact same. All the dickheads in the middle are the ones. That exactly. Suck. <laughs> and like, it, that's the thing about fire track. Like it looks like, looks like it looks it's like oh, it's just a flat track and around it you know a bunch of guys going for it but it's just way like in real life it's way more like it's it's like we're going fast and you know it's just different it's it's kind of like even when i watch it on on like youtube it's like oh this looks like yeah yeah, yeah. nothing exciting like yeah. no one's doing like huge triples or whatever but when you're there in real life you know we're going we're going fast which is like the biggest part i think of it and then like the short tracks the real small ones are fun because like people just smash into each other and it's like it's like just throws another it's like the four different it's like to win a championship you gotta be really good at everything yeah yeah you can't yeah. just be like uh you know half mile specialist yeah yeah or you, you gotta be everything specialist. um which is like super cool which i think i struggled with the most in the first two years yeah like i wasn't all rounded yeah and i struggled a lot at certain tracks and then like now i'm better at more, all the money you know like i'm more I, I podiumed every single style of track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's good in that way that I think, you know, it, and it makes another, like, uh, adversity. It brings another bit of, you know, adversity to it, whatever. Yeah. You got to be, you got to be good at all. And, like, the, the, it's like motocross. Like, the we have, like, loose tracks, like Southwick, and then we have, like, really hard pack tracks. Yeah, yeah. That, like, are blue from top to bottom. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's different. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I mean, it's definitely... 
gaining more like way more popularity sure, yeah. and then i think the you add in the hooligan racing as well yeah hooligans is gnarly bro that's underrated is it yeah dude put up some hooligans highlights just put up just put up hooligan highlights crash reel like dude, those <laughs> guys get sent <laughs> and so many people race those but what's so what's the difference between the hooligans and then like uh, a, hooligans is just like the twins oh that's not hooligans. horrific crash that's four car. <laughs> yeah oh, i was at hill um it's like uh, uh this, i think might have put super hooligans on. yeah oh yeah super hooligans might I think that's what's called um but yeah like it's it was designed originally um for like the average punters like yeah. go out there and have fun yeah and then because those twin blacks are pretty gnarly yeah uh i don't really know what's going on here uh but um just 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 type in super just, hooligan just pretty, yeah, super hooligans so, I don't know. and see uh if that comes up yeah there you that's go. road we've got to get some dirt going the dirt's it there you go yeah oh no that's no nah, i don't get that one that's like an introduction but if you go up go up and then there's go up again was there one dirt no there wasn't oh shit eh? maybe just maybe put flat track behind it oh yeah there you go but they have like hooligans on the road now that'd be pretty cool to do yeah it's pretty fun so we would... have you done that no i haven't no um go down yeah, go down oh yeah, here we go watch this the rolling sands no, no that's that's one of ours go back Rolling yeah sands. that one coaster mesa one yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Rolling sands is super into it eh? yeah no he's like full into it they did the one at just mute it Griff. so like these bikes here uh that's a super bike but these bikes here are supposed to have stock frames yeah. so like look at this guy here in second like it's like he's riding like literally he probably rode to the track yeah, <laughs> yeah, third yeah. but like you just it's like run run you brung and like it brought flat track racing big again yeah yeah because it was just like everyone's like oh wow like people actually ride and like design flat track bikes and and they go fast but like these guys are just like go out there and it is the funnest racing to watch but like now like Berriman gets into it yeah yeah his dad randy and then there's you know debrino frankie garcia like it's pretty packed but originally it was originally it was just like just like bolt some gear on the old back <laughs> and get after it <laughs> so what would be the best block for this you reckon i got no idea I've got oh a KTM actually, a K, ATM, KTM 890 they in the road they they do really well yeah um it was like this year so this is uh number three is Joe Cobb that's Cody's dad that just won the championship oh my teammate yeah 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 yeah, like yeah. he's a weapon oh like, he's getting it too yeah. look at him go I think he's on a triumph there so. yeah dude that's so sick but that's a short track so um yeah like I I want to find some crap like dude these crashes like they have that is just like it's like yeah it's i guess we need to put in rolling sands yeah maybe rolling sands hooligan crashes oh got a wobbler but like these guys are just like going having fun yeah and like it got like so big at one point like yeah like it, it's it looks like uh, but like one point that it was like like we'd go and watch um it before the the nationals uh because like, they were like the day before us yeah and these guys so they followed the circuit around yeah, like so in line with you we guys. share rounds with them oh cool okay yeah so like sometimes like roland will have i think it's like maybe like four or five rounds where we're interlock yeah and then um and then we'll have uh, can you me. notice those races are bigger uh just no, it, not more really. flat track it just depends on where you're at yeah yeah like we have some race tracks that and it's harbor flat track too because um we go to race tracks that are in the middle of nowhere. Like yeah, we've yeah. literally got like the towns, like there's like four hotels, like every hotel's booked because by the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's tough when you go to certain places, but then you go to some places like uh, like Bike Week, and like yeah. you'll go to Sturgis, and then yeah. we'll go Springfield Mile. Um, Sacramento is pretty big too. Like you go to some tracks, and like we go to Costa Mesa. This I think it's Costa Mesa. Yeah, we go to there in and, California. Yeah, yeah. So they'll be big but like uh yeah they'll be big i'm trying to that's the schedule for next year anyway oh uh, yeah okay so yeah starting in march and then end in september yeah so smaller schedule for next year which is sick oh it's yeah arizona have... bike weeks in there yeah. oh yeah orange county half mile yeah that'll be pretty sick july 08 yeah 
Yeah, sick. Oh, then yeah, you lean a half mile. That's cool, man. Yeah. So do you, do you see flat track kind of growing on, on the up and growing and you yeah. know like start to get more money, more sponsors, more like TV, all that sort of stuff? For sure, it's you know like we're on FS1 now live. Sick. So Fox Sports, I think every Saturday. Oh no, whenever we race Saturday night. So yeah, like that's pretty cool. Um, Fox Sports is big over there. Yeah. Um, we're on NBCSN I think we are too I'm not too sure and then we have Fans Choice where you can watch all the live coverage like yep. qualifying everything on that and then you have um, no Fox Sports isn't live Fans Choice is full live yep. Fox Sports is like day the week after, after or, yep. or day after some on uh, TV and like fully like condensed program so it's got just like the races on it Yeah. Um, but yeah we have that and then I see it growing I do um, I feel like everything goes through its ups and downs and you know, we're on a little bit of a down. Like, we're not really on a down at all. We're just like just coming like, out of a down. Kind yeah, of. like O ten, like from, you know, like, like it was so in the eighties and nineties. Dude, flat track was massive. Yeah, like huge in America, and then it went sort of in a real, like early two thousands. It was good, and then it sort of went through a massive hole around the GFC and stuff, and it's starting to come back. You know, um, but hopefully, you know, it takes less than what we think it's going to be till it gets good again but the like with all these new bikes they're getting released it's so hard to work out a twins program yeah okay because like you know everyone's obviously making things better you know electronic th- like fly by wires and stuff and they wanted to sort of keep it old schoolish i think yeah but now they're starting to go with the new terms so they're trying to work out a package for everyone um that will be better but it's so hard because like indian built a purpose-built flat track bike uh, okay the indian like ftr 1200s based yeah. off the indian ftr 750 yeah and like they restrict that bike they kept restricting it um which you know it is what it is but i'm not in that class i'm not wanting to talk about it not wanting yeah, to get involved. yeah yeah but um so like it made it tough for them because like they were doing like they won like the four years they were just like they just killed it like they didn't they lost barely any races but now they started what, like what model bike was that ftr 750 type that in griff's so it's Indian based FTR off the, 750. Yeah, the, that's the race bike. It's the FTR 750. Price in India. It's price in India. That's funny. Yeah, I want to see what that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's... That thing's pretty gangster, eh? Yeah, it's a clean bike. So they built that. That was like a purpose-built for flat track, essentially. Yes. And then they just started murdering everybody. Yeah, like it was like they won every race. Yeah, and then now right. the 890 just got released and that thing's killing it. Like Respoli did five rounds this year and won one so what's the kdm 890 that one that i showed you before that wally brown yeah thing. yeah okay yeah yeah yep. So what's the stock that? version of that look like 890 like yeah look at their stock version and like comparison yeah because like, a lot like of that work look, goes into them they look like just a stock my oh dude so what so that one there that black one uh top nope street one yeah that's what it that's what it's based off no way so was the frame that it was in was that that's that frame the 890 frame looked like yeah. a motocross frame yeah that's crazy eh weird isn't it once you get everything off a different swing arm and, yeah and uh uh different tires tires obviously suspension front end yeah and uh subframe so but you see that you know like kind of coming back because i mean even for me like as a very casual fan of it yeah like i feel like over the last few years i've definitely seen a lot a lot more then you got ryan sives pastrana the super hooligan stuff yeah so do you think it sort of is like building up yeah it's growing for sure um and you know it's going to be good if it keeps growing um we just got to keep you know keep it getting the word out there and whatnot and uh and then you know always like everything gets some younger people involved Aussie flat trackers you know from yeah, Europe yeah. and it's so American based the the series well it is every round's in America but there's like right this year I was the only full time international and Ferran Cardus came over for a few rounds but like you know there's we need to you know keep bringing them over because obviously international brings more people more this yeah, more that yeah. Um, but yeah no it's definitely grown for sure um, and it's and it's good to see it's good to be involved while it's growing yeah and so when do you see yourself winning a championship in this thing like well like last year was definitely tough because i lost the whole series by six points yeah and if something ha- hadn't to happen i would win a championship um so it's 
it's hard, but you gotta you gotta move on. You know, it's tough. Cost me. And that lot. was like a rules type of thing. Yeah, it's rules. So what what? How does that work? Like, what kind of rules can be fucked up in that? Oh, it's, it wasn't really, like it wasn't really fucked up, but like it was just a, it, how it happened and and what went down. It uh, it just you gotta look at it from two sides. Yeah. Honestly. So, like, my I'm actually really good friends with the guy right now. Um, but his name is Dallas, and then he got taken out in the last corner and uh like because he was like his last lap last corner on the way to check a flag someone just like fully cleaned him up and uh they gave him the win oh really so they were to back a lap um but now it's a rule in the rule book so but like it was just sort of like so if you get cleaned out last corner last, last lap, lap it goes back a lap uh, why do they do that just for safety so safety so yeah, yeah so okay. like it's like look at it two sides like it's a rule now but when it happened at the time i was like yeah mm. yeah but um and so did he win the championship he won championship that? by six points Fuck. but that is pretty hectic but like now it's like it's a rule and whatnot but yeah we're like unreal good friends now and and whatnot so but that's what it is well i mean and the f- but the fact that you're in that position to yeah. win the championship what was that your second like, uh third year yeah, fourth, third, third fourth year. year or something yeah yeah but I mean, first two privateer, yeah. Third one, pretty much a privateer. So yeah, it was third one was like full blown, no dad, just so I can yeah, yeah. So like fun. you've obviously so yeah. I got second that year as well to Dallas. So Dallas won it two years. He's a weapon, and then amateur nationals, he beat me. So like I've like, it was more the fact that like he it beat me again. again. I'm like, bro, yeah, <laughs> you give me beat one, me, bro. yeah, <laughs> give me one time. But so he's in the twins class now. He races on the Yamaha. Yeah, Monster on Yamaha and. Yeah, so he's doing well for himself and he's won a few races this uh this year previously and he's doing good. Yeah. So you. so you think going forward though that like you can be a championship dude? Yeah, for sure. Like I, I think, you know, I had it this year was tough, broke my leg, but um yeah, I just gotta knuckle down, you just gotta get it done, just be head headstrong really. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um but yeah, I truly believe that, yeah, it's coming. Yeah. And what so like I guess what do you do to be more ready every year you know well for me i feel like the first three years i didn't really do anything training wise um now i'm on a program out at 547 there with levi yeah at marichidor there yeah he kills it um you know and doing a lot more of that off bike training and then yeah just trying to get to know myself a little bit more if that makes any sense like what i want on a bike and what i what i need and what's hold me back like <clears throat> i get so worked up on race day that like oh, i gotta like and s- sometimes i just need to like chill and just ride the bike yeah and what not, kind of worked up like uh i just get like like if something happens or something like it's just like i think about stuff a lot yeah so i think i just need to like just like forget about all that and just like go out there and ride because i freak out about like little things like you know like oh I don't freak out at all, but like, it's like, it plays on your mind. Yeah, they're the things you think about. Yeah, it's like, oh, do you think the bike should be like, you know, should we change tire pressure, some of that? So it's like, I need to just like go ride. Yeah. I need to care less. Yeah, and I think that that's the shit that just comes with experience though. Eh? For sure. Like, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because we're, I'm going to do World Vets next year. Oh, sick. <laughs> and uh, we like, my brother's going to do it. Nice. Like, some of my best mates are going to do it. Franco is going to come and wrench for us. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, your yeah. Frank? Yeah, it'd be sick. But Getting Big Neil as well? Hopefully. Yeah, yeah if he's not fucking wifed up, you know. <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> Mate, they're all getting married these days. Oh, no way. Um, but you know you sort of now i'm in the headspace like oh fuck i've got to start thinking about getting fit yeah you know like being being ready like and i think that yeah it's just whenever you've got some kind of big goal or whenever you've got a big challenge that you're kind of working towards you just you want to almost do as much work as you can before whatever the event is or whatever yeah the goal is because that's the only way you're going to feel like for sure ready you know and i think the thing with me too is you have like everything's mental right these days everything i think you know when i train more and and do more off bike stuff it makes me mentally stronger knowing that i'm going into that race the best i possibly can be and so like now it's just it should all just fall into place but like previous year you know like ever since i've been on ktm it's been pretty like it's been serious but like like but years before that you'd go into some rounds be like oh i hope i can get a top five this week but yeah sort of just like but now it's just like Go there to win, win. Yeah. yeah, which is different, 
it'd just be like cool like my first you know three years when i get a podium it'd be like yes like yeah sick. yeah now it's like uh nah, it's want to win yeah that's all it is it's it's crazy how it changes dude you see those and the hyper competitive people like we were at um we were at La, uh, Barcelona this year yeah. and Jack was in F2 and he got his first F2 podium. First F2. That's a big deal. Yeah. he was. He's killing it too. Yeah, he's killing it. He was fucking livid that he got third. Yeah. Like he was, uh, I, think, I can't remember if he got second or third, but he was podium, didn't win and like he came straight in, was like, we're all like, fuck, good job, bro. Like, good on you. And he's like, yeah, cheers, but I'm over it. Like, that was shit. And then he's like, all right, straight talking to the engineers. This is what we've got to do. This is what I'd lost the rears. Like, just didn't it's, that's, care about the podium at yeah. all. It's like you get to a point where, like, when you know you can win and you didn't, they are like the hardest. Yeah. Like, it's like the hardest thing in the world. Um, but then when you win one and you don't expect, like, something was off or like you, you're battling through something and you win one, it's like the best feeling ever. But like, when you're like, fastest than qualifying or you win your heat race and you're just on point and you bottle it up in the main it is just like the worst like texas this year i fast qualified i think i won my heat and i was the only person to do a 20 or whatever time it was in that 10th so i was quick and came to the main event and just pretty much just bottled it and threw it away like i got third and like i was just like bro like it's so, it's like, so I just wonder yeah, yeah. like I just wanted on the podium just punch someone like it's so tough but like our qualifying times like on a mile track will be like top 20 or not even on a mile like some clay tracks will be like top 20 within half a second really yeah so you sneeze and you're like yeah it's that side is underlooked because it's so close in times in qualifying because everyone can do one burn one lap yeah like so yeah and like so how our, our like our rows work because there's four rows four 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 so there's oh no there's 16 in a main so there's you know whatever four yeah, fours. yeah four rows um but so top eight from qualifying go to the front row on the heat race yeah and then the top two from the heat races go to the front row on the main so like for me all i think about is top top eight in qualifying so like top four and uh sorry top two in the heat in the heat and then main event i'm on the front row that's all i care about yeah um because i don't really care about like putting the fastest time in to say the least yeah yeah like i'd rather like think about the bike because it's all the same because you're just trying yeah. to get on the, to the it's front to get row. top yeah that's all i care about on race day is front row yeah. until i get there but um it's like the biggest thing is uh it's yeah it's front row because if some tracks we go to is like so hard to pass yeah because it's one line groove even if you're on the front row it's still gonna be hard it's to pass. still hard to pass yeah, yeah. so like if I can get myself in a good situation every time, that's what I aim for. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, but like, you got some guys that like put in an absolute heater of a qualifying that are time. They're just down to sand. Yeah. And then just fucking, you come past them on the first time. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you yeah. at? Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, like that. I, I wonder how to, that there's something that I've always wondered if I just like didn't have this ability as a writer was, like how do you even know when the times are that close and the there's so many people in that time like how do you know what's fastest and how do you know when you've gone fast on a lap that's so short and so little like room for error like can you tell when you're on a heater 100 percent. how like it's like i'll come into a corner like that's just normal short track tiny track like if I come in there and the rear will get a little too sideways or I'll have to hesitate a little bit to get it back in line, I know I've like messed the time up. So like like they're all flat, they're all smooth it, or like some, they're, sometimes they're rough as you've seen before. Yeah. So like I'll know if there's a rough section, I got to go through it and like flat track is so precise. You got to be perfect. And so I'll see like a little like, you know, like a little bump and you'll, I have six laps to do a good time. You have two six, you have two six lap qualifying. Oh, is that it? Yeah. So you just got to get in there and get it done. And then, and then one six lap practice. So you get three chances, you get two chances legitimately, put a good time in and then you have the practice before it. So you're trying like scope out and uh, like rough spots or something. And then, but yeah, I'll notice because like you can feel the spin like at the rear wheel and said traction is everything. So if I am just like on the throttle and you feel it just a little, you're like, no, nah, Blind it. Yeah. It's that critical. Yeah. Some tracks. Some tracks it's like, nah. Like Lima. 
you can just hold it on you'd be right yeah yeah but like some tracks that are like super slick and in like wheels in line and you've like had a like you've spun up off the corner you'd be like no it's done that's crazy eh? yeah it's that that fine of a line and you can feel like a really direct connection between like throttle and rear wheel like you can feel the the spin and like because even the like the little bit of flat tracking that we've done like once you get it spinning like even moving your weight can like slow the spin yeah. down it's it's a trip to yeah for like the, even the stuff that i felt like i can't imagine for you like the level of feel that you'd have when the when it's like spinning yeah. and you're like pretty much wide open yeah so like yeah you'll, you'll feel and like i i'm really bad for it but i ride the rear brake a lot like just so come into the corner sometimes the rear brake will help you get it set quicker Instead, you know, when you like have everything, it's got like that free feeling. Well, when it's when you're on the brake, you can really get on the throttle earlier and like compress everything, which I like that. Oh, which is like squat the bike Roar, down more yeah. too, eh? And you just hear them just whoa, 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 like they're real like just lugged out because you're stomping the brake so hard. But then, like, so that's when another time you'll know you've done a good time because you'll feel like you'll just go through the corner so smooth. If you're going through the corner and it's just like you're doing these yeah. ones, or whatever, you're just like that's done. But yeah, so it's just more more precise than anything yeah so like that's the that's the biggest thing i struggle with in qualifying too is like letting it all hang for yeah. one lap yeah like i suck at it it's like that's what i think i lose a lot is always been like the second half of the year to score on. i don't think i have one front row start oh really yeah like i just bottled every single one yeah so that's like i guess yeah when you start to look now about bu- building out a championship yeah like that's Pro, the first port of call is probably to really like look at your weaknesses for sure or like just analyze the year that you had previously yep. in like data mode like yeah. how many front rows what was my average quality time and then like then get that and then dive into that and be like okay this is what i do in qualifying this is what i probably need to do better for you sure. know so it's like you almost need to because you've you've obviously got the skills and the speed to win championships but that's the like the last thing i guess so, yeah, you sort of haven't haven't won yet you gotta you know? pull the piece together yeah so is that like pretty much where you're at at the moment it's just like trying to decode like the puzzle yeah pretty much and just really i think it sounds stupid but like i needed to come home yeah like i was, like the last two months in america i was really homesick yeah i hadn't been home in two years and i got a nephew now and you know everything you know you know what it's like to know a yeah, place like yeah, home yeah. i was really like struggling but didn't really want to tell anyone or whatever like i didn't want to show like weakness whatever yeah. you know how it is and uh and yeah i was really just like struggling big time so then when i came back here it was just like a fresh it's like a fresh air there's just like, yeah yeah like well back home and and i think next year that's what i've been working on is my fitness side of things as well i think you can never be too good yeah um well, I think the thing about, you sort of said it before, but the thing about um, fitness is that your concentration yeah. stays better. So you're probably in more of a mental game than a physical 100%. game. Yeah. Uh, but, your, track, yeah. but your body needs to be able to support yeah. the the minds, like staying for sure. fresh and sharp for, yeah. for that entire time. And like, that's the thing too, like flat track, we're not getting beat around for 30 minutes just on the, like those dudes are so gnarly, like moto guys. And then like, what Miller and all those dudes do, like forty five minutes on a bike, are you Bro, joking? Like I I did the I did two up with him at the bend. Oh you did? That's sick. And fuck bro, I could not hang on after two laps. Yeah. Like I was death gripping that thing. It was out of control. Yeah. So like thirty five minutes on one of those things. Imagine just fucking Yeah. Like nah. So that's, out of control so like yeah we are like we don't have to be as like physical as what they are like you look at the motor guys those guys are brutal and like supercross like i talk about being precise and whatnot but like you hear like anything anything you have to be precise in the top level like you hear what like the manager guys say like i'm so into manager p it's not even funny like mm. i will not miss a session that's sick um and like they talk about it all the time they're like hey we can if we're like half a meter too wide or not even like they'll notice a bad time and yeah. it's like 24 corners or whatever sometimes you know 18 corners whatever and so like you think about that that's precise and when they're doing 300 k's an hour but then you look at like um supercross guys like have to land in a two <laughs> this, meter patch it, not even yeah. Yeah, a meter patch every time yeah so and rides up the face so i say that but then like those guys are just like gnarly but so 
yeah that, i think ours is more mental side yeah um then like those guys are just like physical like just animals like they're brutal but i i think that um the thing with the flat track stuff is though that it's it's so short condensed there's so many times that yeah you're on the bike so to be to be asked to like sprint that many times and be consistent for yeah. like that much it's such like an explosive type of for sure deal like then there's no setting in for a rhythm and yeah. you know like just ticking off the laps kind of thing yep. so and then yeah especially like the way you break down qualifying like it's very it's like a cutthroat form of race oh yeah it's just like you got to be super sharp like by the time you get on track you cannot mess around yeah like especially even like as i said like you do, we do like 30 32 laps some short tracks yeah like that is like the most mind-numbing thing in the world yeah you think about going on a circle like it's yeah. just like you gotta be so focused yeah one little mistake boom you lose position well that's what they say you can never draw a perfect circle yeah so it's like you, you, that's sort of almost what flat track is you know? exactly. it's like you're yeah. trying to draw a perfect circle while it's like changing there's people moving around and stuff like that for sure yeah being being homesick too is definitely a very real thing that oh, it has yeah. like a massive impact on your performance yeah no I was I was I don't know I wasn't like over. I wasn't I was just sort of sorry I was more just the fact that it was just like so long it's so long and it was just like my parents and you know it's everything you know like my, I got four sisters so much had happened there's so much had changed all my mates like all my mates back old I haven't seen them for two years no one's seen, seen no two years except my parents yeah and uh and yeah that was definitely like weighing on me pretty heavy um yeah. and just plus like the place we live like i don't know if anyone's aware of this but we live in the best place in the world australia yeah oh psycho yeah it's unreal it's psycho dude yeah and like everyone's just so chill and everyone gets on good and i think that's yeah as you said it's very looked uh people don't look at it seriously like being homesick but 100 is like a legit thing yeah when did you really start to feel it probably like uh, four rounds three rounds to go like i was just like yeah man i just need to go home yeah and and what was stopping you just the schedules to two pack it was no the schedules are so drawn out that like last this year uh like we had spots where it was like four week gap yeah and, and then, you couldn't come home in that nah it's i don't know i don't really you just didn't want to mess with the program yeah 100 percent. and then like i missed you know my leg was broken that uh, uh, that took for a while to get good again it was did you have of, to have surgery and stuff on that yeah 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 okay so um like i broke my tibial plateau tibia oh yeah, so that's a bad one. right on my knee yeah um and it just took forever to get fully healthy again like it was just like like i still struggle like it still feels like shit sometimes today but um like it for like two three four months like it was just like always lo- yeah longer it's it's just it was always there you could just tip you can tell yeah yeah um so yeah that was that was tough as well and yeah i don't know i feel like i just need to get home honestly yeah yeah man it's a it's definitely a a super real feeling and it's like it's hard to just sort of like wears on you you know it's like almost like you're carrying the more you think about it the closer it gets the worse it gets yeah and it's, it's like something that you're just carrying around that you sort of like can't put down it's one of the things where there's like one of my criticisms of chad when when he was in america was that he just it seemed like he just didn't give a fuck about Australia. Yeah. And that was like, that was all Australians like criticism of him. But then after talking to him about it, he was like, yeah, I just had to clip it from my brain. Oh yeah. Otherwise yeah. it would have ruined me. Like, and he, he said he could see it with other people that wanted to just be at home. Oh, I want to be yeah. at home. I want to be at home. I want to be at home. But he was like the one dude that was like, nah, I'm clipping it. I'm just it's going full animal, America. Though. Yeah. But that's what it takes, you, you know, like, yeah. So For yeah, sure. it's a it's it's a gnarly Lawrence thing. Lawrence brothers in the same thing. Like they don't even go back to Oz anymore. Nah, they just fully or like Jet did a couple years ago, or whatever. But like, they're just fully locked in, which you need to be. And I think it helps having your whole family there as oh, well. Oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, when you're solo, it's tough. But yeah, like what they've done, the Lawrence family is very impressive. Same with Reedy. Like yeah, I mean, they just go over there and do their thing, and then just keep doing it. Yeah. Have you got to hang out with Jet and Hunter much at all? No, I don't. I don't really know them. But oh, it's, we should definitely try and get them to get them to a race or something. They're, they're legends, dude. Yeah, but that's actually so funny. So that because in nineteen, when I was doing my own thing, I go to this motor track, and there's like five people that go to the place. Like it's yeah. very, very low key. Sick track, but it's low key. It's right near St. Louis, 
And um, the guy that owns the track, he's like the coolest dude. He's just unique. Like yeah. got tattoos all over him. He's just like, just chill. And uh, he goes to me and my buddy, we're going to go ride. And he goes, we're like, hey, can we come ride, mate? And he goes, yeah. He said you can, but don't get in the way the, the Geico boys. And I was like, oh, Geico boys. He goes, yeah, there's like a couple here. My buddy, Matt, was like, oh, dude, it's Sexton. Because Sexton's from around Illinois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, it's probably Sexton and an amateur or something. And I was like, oh, fair enough. So we go to the track. We park away from him. We, you know, we don't want to get in their way. And uh, I'm like trying to look at him. I'm like, I wonder who it is. And one of them rolls on track. And it was Hunter and Jet in the no, middle of nowhere no at shit. Ride Organic. And I'm like, you kidding? No way. Yeah. And like, like what they do is like gnarly. But when you go on the same track as them. Yeah and see what they're doing then you're like what? like they're gnarly dude that must have been a cool experience was, you didn't go up and say day. not really no, I was too shy I was, Fuck, I was you young and I just didn't really they're legends yeah but yeah Jet would have been probably uh, I was I was uh, what was it as 18 I was probably 17 or something yeah and yeah he probably would have been like four. I don't know he might have been 14 or something and he's just fucking ah, hanging really? off it yeah what's that track like maybe I don't know how old he is um it's a sick track, yeah. Yeah. It's more just like low key, just sort of like you can do, you can go there whenever you want. But when he preps it, it's sick. Yeah. But see, I'll go like twice through the week, or whatever. Um, every, try and get there every week, and it's like some days it's just dusty, but I just ride. I think sometimes it's better when the track's worse. Yeah. Because it makes you think about more like sort of flat track wise. You got to think about yeah the slippery yeah. stuff and that. So yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's one thing that's so rad about America. That's why I want to do another kind of cross-country road trip. I just want to take a bike in the back. Because I never rode when I was there. That was like I just... I didn't have health insurance. I didn't have a bike. You need that. Yeah. And I I had... I got... um, There was like a few times I rode a 350 Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of like one of the JDR bikes that was just floating around. So I got to ride that a little bit. But I just... I literally... I never rode Glen Helen. I never... Like all the cool places... Kahia and Glen Helen are my favorite. Yeah, really? Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, so the, the guy that owns and like runs Kahia, he loves the podcast. So I reckon that oh, nice. when we get over there, I want to do like a ride day at Kahia Creek. Yeah, Kahia is be, sick. Yeah. yeah I, I went, I filmed, I filmed everywhere. Yeah, like right. I filmed at every track, but I've just never, I just was always behind the camera. So for that's me now, I'd just be like, I would just love to just put a 350 in the back yeah, and, go and just fucking moto. That's sick, yeah. yeah. Just rent an RV and just, Get like a little bike rack on the back and just poke it up, lock it on, just yeah. hit the road and that'd be sick. Yeah, so because America just has so many dope tracks that are just crazy. You would have never heard of them, and yeah. like it seems like the dirt's good in so many places. The people that own the tracks are super cool. Yeah, and there's always guys that rip. You know, you just go through all. That's these the biggest thing, guys that rip. You go to a track, rips. yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah, who's that? You go on track, and he's like. Got four numbers on his bike. Yeah, he's yeah. so fast. You're yeah. like, who is that? Like, they're everywhere. No matter where you go, there's, like, guys that are just like, what? Why have I never heard your name? And he's just, like, upside down whip, just, like, hanging it out. And, like, like big what? jumps, too. Like, kids yeah. on... That's the one thing that you'd, I'd always, like, trip me out. Kids on 65s doing, like, 120-foot jumps. Yeah, just, like, just are nothing. You fucking serious? Yeah, and everyone in the pit just looks around. Oh, yeah, sick. Just yeah. Looks, I'm like, bro, what? Yeah, no, America's the promised land when it comes to For sure. motocross. You can see why there's so many good guys. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, there's another track that we go to, like, Briar and Shannon and all them. It's called New Jersey Motorsports Park. Yeah. And Pull it up. Have they got Instagram? Let's see. This mate, track. this track is sick. That surely is, that sounds like, oh, that bike is porn, bro. It's sick. That bike so, what's it called? New Jersey? No, yeah, New Jersey Motorsports Park. I think they have Instagram. There Bang! Let's give him a shout out. I want to go right here. Oh, that's not the cars. Oh, that, cars. All right, we're not going there. <laughs> oh, d- they surely have to have an Instagram. Maybe go it's park. Oh, that's there. Damn it's it. Got, maybe it's got a hashtag. Oh no, NJ uh, MP. That one there. Uh, no down. Yeah. Surely. It has to be. Yeah, dude. That's like America just has all of these gems, bro. No, nothing. You Keep can... scrolling though. Maybe the moto. Oh, the the road races have just got it on lock, bro. Yeah, there's a there's a road race track right there. That's the Moto America side, but oh yeah, but yeah. So anyway, this track in New Jersey. Yeah, this track in New Jersey is like the funnest track. Um, maybe just put New Jersey Moto track. Yeah, I think it's. What's the um? And then, 
type new. Oh, here, right here, right here. Oh, dude. Yeah, what? sick. That track is sick. That is insane, bro. Yeah, it's, and it's like like nice, like loamy dirt. Yeah, well, New Jersey's all yeah. like that loamy it's soil. Sick. Yeah, right. Dude, see, I just, this is making me want to just fully load up a truck, an yeah. RV, and just go and do so it. So they open every Wednesday and Saturday. Yeah. Or Saturday, Sunday, or something. So we're, every Wednesday we're there when I'm at Brian Shannon's house. That track is so fun. That is unreal, dude. Well, I'm going to have to come and ride with you. Yeah, 100%. As soon as I'm up, back Catch over. Catch on the fire track as well. I'd love to. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be I'd get hooked up. Yeah, it'd be sick. I've never, I've never really done it on like a proper, proper track. They, um, the Bathurst, the mm-hmm. flat track race, they do at Bathurst. If I'm home, I'll do that with, with Millsy. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, I reckon. They reckon Brizzy Cup next year. Yeah, I just see, I guess it just depends where I'm at. Yeah. I would have done it this year, but yeah, I just, I just haven't been, haven't been home last months have been a bit of a wild yeah, travel been all over the show yeah a little wild travel schedule but yeah I'd, de- I'd love to come to one of your races i'd love to come ride moto i'd love to yeah, do all sweet. so if i if i can get over there we'll make it happen yeah so tidy sweet thanks for coming on bro no cheers mate it's Appreciate been good it. thanks for thanks for doing it yeah it's sweet I, um yeah all the best for the next next few years i definitely i feel like you're going to be bringing home a championship for australia mate. that's the goal hopefully yeah and then right off into the sunset all the girls oh. all the money let's go <laughs> yeah, sounds good <laughs> uh, maxwell everybody yeah cheers if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang